Cam, can you talk a little bit about that big hit you had on the sideline? Has that been something you've been working on this offseason? Just, you know, outside of your ball hockey abilities, being able to make big tackles like that? Um, they weren't really giving us too much in the past game, so you know, we got to find a way to make some plays. So. Can I just ask Wesley about this? You, know, you guys are from this city, and you guys came into this game with a five game winning streak at home. How much does it mean tonight to start reversing that and win a game in front of your hometown? It means a lot, you know, because Chris Brown really been on us after that. Really about just making sure, like, the hard rock is the hardest place in college football. So day in and day out, that's what we do. On Green Street, we make sure we, we work as hard as we can. So when we get here, we earned it. Cam, you guys obviously working on in Coach Gidry's defense now since the spring. Uh, how much validation did it kind of, like, come out first game and really kind of just shut down the other team the you know, first time you guys played in that defense? Um, real good, you know. I think we've been. I think Coach Gidge is a great coach, and he's been um, putting us in a scheme that fits us. So, Cam, it didn't feel like there were many Emmys at all as a defense. Like you guys were, were supposed to be. Was that my right or wrong? Or how did how do you sort of feel like the execution was? Um, you know, kind of kept it simple. You know, so you want just making us keeping it simple as possible, and making us play fast. So, Wesley said that there was a shift in energy. Feel like there's a, a different energy surrounding this team. Yeah, and I'm speaking on last year, but we just, you know, we, we earned it right. So we just make competitive every day, in, every day in practice, and that's what we earn. We come here and play hard. So yeah. Okay, more for camp. But what do you think is the reason for this you know, shift in energy of sorts from last year to this year? Um, us just being competitive, you know, just making sure we all fall and we go after each other. So. We always got to make the um, practice hard in the game, and that's what we've been doing. They quarterback seem to be confused about where the real Miami was before the game. Did they cross your mind at any point in time during the game? No. <laughs> <laughs> we, we didn't really care, you know. We got him going around. He wasn't really doing too much, so that's all that mattered to me. How quickly, how quickly you start thinking about Texas a <laughs> You know, doing it. Real good team. You know, we're going we're gonna to take in this win and enjoy it. But we know who we got next, and we know like what our mental state got to be. Any quick your thoughts on your first game as a hurricane and uh, how the defense played tonight? Well, we came a long way. Um, I've been excited since the day I stepped in here. And coming out on that field, it was just a lot of butterflies. So I was excited to go to work with my brothers. And yeah, we came out with a dub. And nothing better than that. Mario said when you guys were coming off the field that you, you told them they just a lot to fix. What if I'm worried about switching phones? Well, I'm here with my son. Oh, I know about that. What if I'm worried about making a switch? Well, feel that way? There's still lots of defense. You guys did great. I'm just curious, even you know, like even as dominating as the win was, you still feel like there's things to fix. There are stuff to fix. Um, you know, we're just trying to get better and better. Um, the standards is high. We try to meet those standards. Uh, we just got to work, uh, watch the film later, and you know, fix the little things. All about details now. You know, we got a big opponent coming in next week, so we just got to make everything perfect. Yeah, is there anything kind of specific you felt coming out of this game that for next week you, you guys got to be better at? We're going to get better at, I don't know, because I, I think we kind of played dominant defense today, but just got to get better at, you know, stopping the run, and I, even though we did, but <laughs> I don't know that's it. Uh, you said that you know going out there you had some butterflies. Uh, did you talk to your brother about how he was feeling? Yeah, we did talk long um, before we went out there. I, mean, um, I just told him, you know, just another game. Uh, keep your composure and just, just you know take it all in and you know play the game. Don't worry about anybody else. Play yourself. So yeah, he was ready. What was it like to be able to like celebrate a win in the locker room with him, his teammates? It was great, man. This feeling, man, it's been a while. So. I love this feeling of winning, and we're going to continue to win. So we're going we're gonna to celebrate tonight, and we're going to get ready tomorrow. You guys have been working, obviously, you know, with Coach Gidry and working with this defense for months and months now. Uh, how does it feel to kind of be able to go out there and for the first time in a game and actually you know, see it succeed? It was a lot of hard work, man. A lot of time being put in for the defense. And Coach G got a really good game plan for us. And I think everybody executed their job. Um, it came down to, you know, the 
little details to make us, you know, a lot better. So I think it was a, it's a good way to start the season off. So yeah. And what's he like, the coach Gidry like, you know, during a game now that you've seen him? You know, how's he on the sideline? What's his like kind of attitude or you know? I honestly thought he was going to be more vocal out there, but I guess he was a little chill. I don't know, but I think he was a little chill today. So yeah. Kiko, it seems like there weren't many mental mistakes on defense. How easy is it to sort of play this defense? Is it? I don't know, it, it almost seems like, like I said, not many mistakes. So is it, is it very like, player friendly? How would you describe it? It all came down to preparation, honestly. You know, shout out to the scout team for giving us those looks. And we just came out here and executed what coaches told us. So that was basically it. When your brother's on the field, did you get a chance to see him play? Did you get a chance to watch any plays, one or two plays or anything? Every time I come off the bench, I, I, I go on the bench, I look up the screen, I look at my brother, how he's doing. And I think he did good today. He did good? Uh, All right. Yeah. <laughs> Got time for one more for Kiko? Yeah. You know, next week you have Texas a and How pumped are you for this football I'm game? excited, man. <laughs> I'm super excited for this game, man. Every game, man, I'm excited. I love being out there on the field, man, just playing football. That's what I do. How good is that effort as a defense feel? Oh, man, it feels great, man. Just going out there and finally executing the game plan and the defense, um, it feels great. It seems like you guys were I mean, very few mental errors, right? Like, it's almost like you were everywhere you needed to be. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, that's, that's, that's the plan every game, right? Uh, you know, just try to cut out the mistakes and, you know, just execute the game plan. That's all it is. Well, so you had a couple tackles and sack. Just, you know, how do you think you played tonight? Um, I feel like I had a pretty good game, but there's always room for, for improvement. Hey, Wesley, you're from this city, and tonight you guys broke a five-game losing streak at home in this stadium. What do you think that means just to the program and all of you players that are from South Florida? Man, it feels good, man. You know, just growing up, watching the Kings, man, and just, just getting back on that winning streak, and man, just, just trying to go one and zero every week. That's all it is. Building on the excitement for tonight's opener, how important is it that the fans come out next week for that game against an SEC team? I feel like it's very important. We're going to need the energy. We're going to need everything to help us come in, to help us build in on this win. And I'm just ready to get to work. I don't remember how much you played in that game last year, but that was you know, a defensive struggle, right? Like, are you, if you, are you, if you guys, Maybe not yet, but are you going to look back at last year and think about that game a lot? Like, not at all, not at all, man. Totally you know, it's, different. it's a new year, a uh, new game, man. And we we in the hard rock this time, so time to go to work. Wesley, you had your first career sack as a game today. What was that feeling like? How exciting was that? I ain't gonna lie, I felt amazing. I felt amazing. <laughs> Just ready to get more. Just ready to get more. Wesley, a lot of freshmen on the field today. Uh, obviously, you were freshman last year. Did you uh, talk to them before the game about what it's like to play? Here and what did you think of like guys like Ruben Bain and Jaden Wayne, all the guys got on the field today? Well, on a daily basis, they ask me questions of like, you know, how how it is playing freshman year. You know, I told them just just don't just block all the noise out. Just do what you got to do. That's really it. What was it like to be back out there with Ruben? Uh, it felt great, man. It felt like high school day, Central days. How much different does this team this year feel to you guys? I mean, it looks different watching. Honestly. I, I could feel the shift, um, just just with everything, just the energy, just the mindset going into the game. Uh, I, I could feel the shift. Um, these guys are hungry, and we're eager to win. Last one for West. Once Coach Christian Ball, Coach Gary pumped the whole thing about just breaking into that losing streak here. How important it is to win at home? They talk about that a lot. Um, yeah, they talk about it a lot. Um, you know, we just we we don't really talk about losing or winning. We mainly just focus on the work. We focus one week at a time. That's all it is. Can't focus on winning or losing, because that's where we go wrong. Just focus on grinding hard every week, and going one and all. Good morning, good morning to the real Miami. To the real Miami. Good morning, folks. How y'all doing, the real Miami? How y'all doing? How you doing? You know, you know, you know, the real Miami. You know, not that 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 place up in um Hawaii. You know, you know, it's the MIA. MIA. That 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 spot up there up in Hawaii. They need to move the A and the I and do. And listen, they the M A I. We we the real Miami. I'm glad we got that dub. 
I'm glad we got that dub. Baby, let's get this thing started today. Let's get the thing started. Let me go ahead and get this off the screen. Whew. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, folks. Get in that comment section. Let me know how you guys are feeling. Let me know how you guys are feeling. Rainy day yesterday, weather delay, all that good stuff. I'm going to start this live off with a little rant. But let me go ahead and get things situated before I do. Now, to the front of the congregation, to the front of the congregation, we need to have a word with StubHub. StubHub, I need to have a word with you. Y'all were despicable yesterday. Now, you might have just lost a, a, a loyal customer. You might have just lost a loyal customer, StubHub. StubHub, I bought tickets on StubHub to the game. I brought my two beautiful daughters with me, brought the twins with me. Um, got to the gate. My ticket won't show. My ticket won't show. The receipt is there. The purchase is there. Everything is there. My ticket won't show. Every time I click to open the ticket, to, to scan it, to go on in, like normal, like routine, sorry, page not found. Sorry, page not found. So here I am purchasing tickets about maybe a month ago for this game and then get to the gate and my ticket won't my, my ticket won't work stub up count your days count your days i will be getting in contact with y'all y'all gonna refund me all 15 dollars <laughs> all 15 dollars god dang it <laughs> i ain't gonna lie to you the, the, the tickets were cheap so i weren't too mad i weren't too mad but i had to go to the box office and buy three new tickets bought three new tickets Inconvenience, inconvenience. That's tough. That's tough. But StubHub, I will be in contact with y'all sometimes a day. Y'all better give me some credit. Y'all better, listen, y'all better give me some hit. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. No head, no head. I know. Anyways, um, got into the game, man. Um, Raining, you know, weather delay, all that good stuff. But nonetheless, we made it. It's the first game. I made it. On, listen, listen, the weather delay actually did me a favor. It's like God knew T2I was going to be late to the game. So God said, let me delay this game for T2I. Look at God looking out for me. I think God was looking out for me. So I got there a little late, you know, got in the game, went up there. You know, we watching it, me and my kids. And, you know, everything going great. Everything going great. The offense, you know, looked good. First, first drive, you see them boys go down the field. Cody Young, um, touchdown. Uh, we see Mark Fletcher with a touchdown. You, you know, now halftime, if, if you guys watched the video I posted um, this morning, I went in the back and I asked some questions. And some of the results be shocking, man. Sometimes I, I understand people come to the game, but they don't really know what's going on. They just there for a good time, not a long time. You know, I – Way up, I feel blessed. Anyway, um, yeah, sometimes people just go there for the good time, just to be there. Some They don't really know the score sometimes. So when I go in the back and I ask them the question, you know, what we need to do in the second half, you know, how you feel about the first half and all that, most of them don't even know the score. So I'll be like, predict the score for the second half. And they'll be like something like, oh, 30 to zero. Are we going to win the game 30 to zero? And I'm like, you do realize the other team has already scored, right? <laughs> they already got three points on the board, so we can't beat them 30 to zero. That, that's where things get kind of awkward. <laughs> but anyways, man, anyways, we won. We won. Nobody, we don't have to wake up today listening to anybody talking about the real Miami is in Ohio. We know it's in Coral Gable. They know it's in Coral Gable. Shout out to Miami of Ohio's quarterback for, for writing a check that his mouth that is, couldn't cash. Just couldn't cash. He, he couldn't cash the check. Talking about we're going to go down there September 1st and show them who the real Miami. Oh, you surely came down here and showed us who the real Miami. <laughs> That's tough. Um, the one time I've ever seen a quarterback talk trash and back it up was none other than um, – Tyler Van Dyke. Tyler Van Dyke. Remember that when NC State, remember when De'Ara King beat NC State and a, and a year later, Tyler Van Dyke said, well, we beat them last year and we're going to do it again. And we did it again. Now, Mr. Um, what's the guy named? Brett? 
Gerbal, 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 whatever his name was, wrote a check that his ad couldn't cash. Plain and simple. Miami handled business at home, snapping that five-game home losing streak. That's 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 key. That's key. Um, a lot of mistakes was made, of course. A lot of penalties. You know, um, Mario said something in the press conference last night that I thought was very incredible. Um, I think it was um, Leonard Taylor that had a personal, you know, foul, and basically cost us. You know, gave gave uh, Miami of Ohio. Uh, um, first down or whatever, and we possibly could have, you know, got him off the field earlier, you know, probably scored some points in, in great field position and everything like that. And Mario plainly said it, listen, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. In no shape or form is that welcome here. I don't care if we went in by 100, basically, what he's saying. Them, them personal files, the unsportsmanlike conducts, none of that ain't welcome here. We got to make it a culture to where that is not acceptable under no circumstances. I loved it. I loved it. Um, if he was in the stadium, it was a different vibe today, man. As you guys know, it's a Friday night. We don't play too many games on a Friday night. But around the fourth quarter, when it was time for the fourth quarter to start, all of a sudden, boom, all the lights goes out. We're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. The Dolphins didn't play their light bill. No, 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 it wasn't nothing like that. It wasn't nothing like that. It was the Miami Club vibes. Now, the DJ popped up on the screen on all four jumbotrons, teletrons, whatever you want to call them. And basically, the whole crowd had their phones. The, the, the place lit up like the club. The music jamming, everything, man. It was a vibe. It was a vibe. You had to be there. You just had to be there. For those of you guys that was at home, when we was enjoying that moment, you was watching commercials. That's tough. That's tough. So if you live close to the stadium and you weren't there, you you, you didn't get the experience, my guy. You, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Should have got off your couch. Should have put down your Bud Light. Should have came to the stadium. That's tough. That's if you live close, by the way. For those of y'all out of town, we understand. We get it. It is what it is. But it was it was it was nice to have football again. And it's even better to, have, to start the season off 1-0, the real Miami, the real Miami. So we could get all those trolls away from the program now, the ones that were sitting around waiting and hoping, <clears throat> praying to God that we lose the Miami of Ohio. Those guys could go have a seat. Most likely they're sitting down right now in Gainesville or in Tallahassee because, listen, God came to me. God came to me. He told me the T2I, go sit on top of your roof, and I'm gonna show you where all the prayers are coming from. When I was sitting up there on top of the roof, I looked over at Gainesville, it was millions of prayers going up from Gainesville. I looked at Tallahassee, it was millions of prayers going up for Tallahassee. God said, T2I, you want to hear some of these prayers? I said, Of course, God, of course. You know what it you, you know what? I listened to a couple of those prayers. Please let Miami Ohio beat Miami. Please, please, God, let Miami of Ohio beat Miami. Oh, man, God, it would be a pleasure if you let Miami of Ohio beat Miami. I listened to those prayers of you Tallahassee trailer trashies and um, semi holes. I listened to the prayers of all you baby lizards. Y'all was hoping and praying on our downfall yesterday. We're not the Gators. Listen, we're not the Gators. You know, Utah beat the oxygen out of them. They had oxygen tank on the sideline. Utah actually beat the oxygen out of Florida. Tallahassee, y'all are pending. Y'all are pending. Right now, y'all are loading. Loading. LSU. LSU. Anyway, they were praying on our downfall. God ain't let it happen. It is what it is. God said, you know what? I'm going to let things run its course. I'm not going to intervene. I'm not going to step in there. I'm not going to listen to these prayers. Okay? <laughs> That's tough. That's tough. Um, be honest with you, I knew Miami of Ohio existed. Um, didn't really know they were the Red Hawks until they actually played Miami. Now, obviously, the Miami of Ohio actually was Miami before the Miami. The, the the if you look at history or whatever, they was there first. But we're the biggest Miami, plain and simple. We're the only Miami that's known. 
we're the only Miami that's on the map, on the map, not just for football, but multiple reasons. I think Miami is like one of the number one cities in the country. I mean, diversity is – most people come to Miami. Most people, when you talk about places they want to visit, it's Miami. It's Miami. So, yeah, man, great game, man, great game. Um, I loved every bit of it. Rain at the end, you know, all that good stuff. I did get some um, great footage. You know, you guys can watch the video I uploaded this morning. Got some great footage. Topped a couple of the players um, last night. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, got some photos with the, with the players, with the kids and everything like that. My my daughters and the cheerleaders, you know, they, they love them, man. They love them. Great atmosphere. Great, great to be Miami. Great. It's great. It's great, man. What a what a win. 38 to 3. We did not allow a touchdown. We did not allow a touchdown. That's amazing. That's amazing. We almost gave up a few, but defense was solid. Defense was solid. Now, obviously, you know, this channel is open mic. Um, you guys are more than welcome, you know, to come on and you know, speak your mind, what you saw, what you like, what you didn't like. All that good stuff. I just put the link in the chat so you guys could click on. Hey, you um angry baby lizard fans, y'all are welcome to come on too. You um you jealous Florida State fans, y'all are welcome to come on too. You know, we want and oh baby. We don't know what it feels like to be 0-1 in 2023. We don't know what it feels like to be 0-1 in 2023, plain and simple. You know, some of y'all might say, pump your brakes, T2, while you play in Texas A&M next week. Hey, bring them on. Bring them on. One game at a time. One game at a time. So, link is in the chat for any of you guys that want to, um, you know, come on. Um, man, shout out to anybody that watched the channel. And, you know, because I feel the love when I'm at the game, man. I feel the love. I feel the love. It, it, it never, ever ever, 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 ever get old when I go in there and I hear somebody hit that hammer game, hammer game, or they be like, T2, what up? It, it never gets old, man. I love it, man. I appreciate each and every one of y'all that watch the channel. I appreciate running into all of y'all, man. The love is amazing. I appreciate y'all. Man. He says, uh, big turnout for um, Miami last night. You want a joke, but it was actually a good turnout, especially that it was not a big name opponent. The stadium was was a lot um, better than times that I've seen it. So it is what it is. Season opener was a success. It is what it is. Most Miami fans, I'm telling you, they'll purchase the tickets. The numbers will be there, but hey, things happen. Sometimes they don't show up. It was a great turnout, especially that it was on a Friday night. It's a Friday night in Miami. High school football is going on also. Some parents, you know, that's Miami fans, they're probably obligated to go watch their kids, family members and stuff like that. You got the people that say, hey, man, it's raining. I can't go outside. I can't get my hair wet. I can't get, um, I can't get sick. So you got other people that just say, hey, man, I'm just going to watch it on the couch. And then you got the ones that say, hey, I got to get ready for the club. I got to go throw this money. I got to go see some Buddha shaking. Does, for the stadium to have as many people as it did on a Friday night with so many different circumstances, which I ain't making no excuse because it is what it is. On Saturdays, sometimes we don't even get this much turnout. So last night was a great turnout, if you ask me, based on what I've seen in the stadium in history, in, you know, of me going to the game. So it is what it is. Last night was a great turnout. So Mr. Seminole Man, keep praying on our downfall. Keep on. You ain't going to get nowhere in life praying on Miami's downfall. You know, we got five rings. Y'all got three. Y'all still ain't catch up yet. Condiment here, that. <laughs> anyway, um, like I said, man, let, 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 let me go ahead and pull up some stats. Let's talk about stats. Let's talk about what we saw last night. Um, Tyler Van Dyke, you know, did a thing or two. Did a thing or two last night. The uh, interception, I know a lot of people are um, harping off of that, you know, kind of floated the ball a little bit. Um, you know, I was 
back talking to some of you guys when that happened. But, you know, it is what it is. Lakers all day, baby. Hey, 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 hey. Laker Nation, stand up. Laker Nation, stand up. What's going on, my guy? Yeah, baby. All right, all right. Listen, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't wild. know. Like, everybody was excited about this this team and everything, but to express about this offense, man. Like, I mean, in the first half, we were doing so many plays, and it was screwing out the screen, out the screen, out the screen, right? And then it was good. And you know what I'm saying? I, I see people thing, but I think you know what I'm saying? Like let me let me say this. He's probably up and down quarterback for us. Let, let me say this. Um during halftime, you know me, if you watch the channel, um, if I see some open I was in the three hundreds when I started. Which I should have stayed in the 300 because the view up there is amazing. You get to see the mm. whole field. I, I'm actually going to mm. buy, I'm actually not buying tickets in the 200 and um, 100s no more. I'm actually going to stay in the 300s because the, the view of the field is amazing. I actually appreciated it better because I went down to the 100s at halftime and I was like, damn, I should have just stayed in the 300s. The view is amazing. So, I, I say that to say this. I went in the halftime when I was making that transition, me and the kids going down to the 100. I ran into um, Street of Football Field and, you know, did a little mm -hmm. video with him and everything like that. And then um, he asked me a question that I thought to myself was like, hmm, not even thinking about it like that, but he might be on or something. He asked me, what do I think Miami need to do in the second half? What what do I want to see? I said, I want to see them go vertical. I want to see more vertical shots. I want to see them open up some of this playbook. And then he said to me, he was like, you think they should do that or they should save some of it for Texas a and You think they should put everything out there on the field right now to show Texas a and And being the fan that I am, I'm like, I want to see it right now. But it, it dawned upon mm -hmm. me, too, like, hey, you know what? This is the first game. We're trying a few things on them. It's working. You know, we don't necessarily have to do too much to beat this team, and they've already, you know, established that. So I went in, into the second half with a different mindset. And, of course, you know, we, we pull out the dub. We did the necessary things to win. We didn't look bad. We didn't give up no touchdowns. We didn't have to do much. Basically, this was mm -hmm. a, exactly what it should have been a cupcake team, and we would we dominate them. Yeah, I feel you. I understand if we, that. If we was going vertical and doing all the extra stuff, we probably would have beat them 60 something to the three. All mm -hmm. the people, everybody would be happy. Everybody would be like, you know, saying we back and everything like that. But I kind of I appreciate the way that we actually did this. Miami tried, you know keep it vanilla and show that we can win and, you know, keep a few things secret. Yeah. Hey, Tisa, what are you saying? Okay, look. Okay, look. I mean, what's up? I mean, I, I, we didn't play Brown, but we're, what's going on? with? I mean, like, I know it's probably not, there's nothing going on with that, but why didn't we play that, Brown? Listen, I've been telling people from what I've seen, oh, I went out there in the scrimmage in Kingfish. Mm -hmm. And I watched both of those quarterbacks play. Mm -hmm. Brown is not accurate, plain and simple. Emery, mm -hmm. Emery looks through he he looks through his um options a lot better than Brown does. Brown is more of a one two one two glance and take off running, or or way too long then take off running. Mm -hmm. He he's not accurate on the passes either. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, Emery came in here and he learned the playbook fast. Even in an interview, Brown said that Emery is one of those guys that came in with an advantage. He knows the playbook, he knows the reads, and he learned faster than he did. 
Mm. It's the accuracy for me, and I think Miami coaches see it too. It's like they they can't bypass it even if they want to. Yeah. It's just but do you, that's evident. But do you think like but do you think like like you know something like if he so like if they keep you know so like like if they keep on like saying overpassing him and you're not really playing him in games, do I you think see em, I think Emory is gonna be quarterback number two, and I think Jakari Brown will transfer at the end of the season. That's my oh, thoughts. Man, I could I be I that, could be man. wrong. I could be wrong, but that's my that's the thoughts that I'm getting. That's the feeling that I'm getting right now. No, nah, I mean I don't want that, man. I, I like Brown because you know what I'm saying. Like how I like him too. That? I like him too. He's you know he's he's a Miami guy. Yeah, he wants man, to be but, here, but sometimes you know it's unfortunate. But the better guy play, and if you're a Miami guy, you would, you understand that 100. If this guy is mm-hmm. outperforming me, he does he definitely deserve to be on the field more than I do. Even though I want to be selfish and I want myself to play, but it is what it is. Yeah, you right me, about that. Yeah, you go out there right now. Let's say mm-hmm. we're going for the same position. Mm-hmm. We competing, and I could see it myself clearly that you're better than me. I would want you on the field more than I would want me on there. I would actually trust you to be on the field more than I would trust me. Yeah, I That's feel you on that one. But hey, man, you never know. You know, I feel like might just you know he just probably just need need to get some playing time in him. You know, and then he'll be okay. You feel me? Um. I just feel like Brown is the QB one that we need. You know what I'm saying? Because like, it was like, like, okay, like, like, imagine, um, imagine Brown and Mark Fletcher in the backfield, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, you have a quarterback like Brown that can run, that can hand it but off. He, but to here's Fletcher. the deal. Here's the deal, though. How are you gonna stop defense, that? Defense, defense is gonna know that you're running every time. Or they're not gonna feel threatened by the pass. They're not gonna feel threatened by the pass. So they're gonna start the box on you. They're gonna dare you to the pass. They know you're gonna run, so they're gonna stop. I don't think it'll work out. If if no. let's just say he had, let's just say he had like the who, what's dang, what's the guy's name? Um, why is this, why is the name slipping me right now? Baltimore Ravens quarterback. Why Lamar Jackson. Name? Let's just say he had the Lamar Jackson um effect where because Lamar Jackson is somewhat accurate. He could run the ball, so that's a threat. Yeah. And he could pass it too. Teams are not worrying about Ja'Cory Brown passing the ball. So when they see him in the game, they're thinking run every time. If he was a little bit accurate, he would be a killer. He would be a killer. But it's the accuracy. And I've been waiting to see, you know, the improvement and everything. We've been waiting two years now. I went into the, the the practices and all that, waiting to hear him emerge as a more, you know, accurate passer and stuff. Unfortunately, it hasn't happened. Now I'm not writing them off saying he can't he can't get there. I just think it's gonna take time and mm-hmm. the way Emery's moving, time ain't waiting on Jakari. Yeah. When, Emer- when I saw uh, Emery I mean, at I the Elite that. Eleven, I knew that kid was special. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, we'll I see we, what's we up. Want, you know what I'm we saying? We want Brown to be successful. Yeah, I do. We I want, want him to be Brown successful. successful too, we just bro, know cause... that, hey. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, the coach's hands are tied in this. You know, Emory is more impressive. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like the coach. You know what I'm saying? Like, already knows what Brown can do. So that's probably why he didn't play him this game. He wanted to see how he was playing, you know what I'm saying? How he was going to do in the game. Maybe, maybe that's what. But, My but I don't know. But like, right how, you, how, you like, how you like our defense? Mm-hmm. Our defense? What do you I, think I, about gonna get, We're going to talk about the defense in a second. We're going to talk about the defense in a second. What I really want to talk about is the concern of – Cody Young. That's what I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. I'm concerned about Cody Young. Will he be available for Texas A&M? Because yesterday, last night, well, when Cody came out, he when he came out, he was iced up. The leg, he he 
he was taped up with ice on that um thigh. Um, as you guys know, you didn't yeah, see him for like a, for like almost the whole half. Still. That's what I'm saying. My it might concern, be just that's thigh, my main concern right thigh, now. So. Like, will, yeah, that's my thing. Will he be available for Texas A&M? Is it just a little a little bump and bruise, or is it more a bigger concern? Yeah, because when he came I out, mean, I, I took a, I took a pictures with him. The kids took pictures with him. The whole the whole thigh was iced up. But did you ask him if he was good or not? Nah, nah, I wasn't gonna. I won't do that. I won't. Oh uh, damn! Well, you should have been like, yo. Nah, I can't do that. Just say something like that. I don't, I don't, okay, okay, okay. I don't like to ask kids about injuries, okay. especially when they write just happened. You know, they might get emotional, or. You know, it might be nothing, and they don't know the extent of it yet, so they're not gonna give you a clear cut answer. They probably don't even know themselves. So I, I, I just yeah. tend to keep it light, not have not have their mind on that. You know, let them enjoy the victory and all that, and then we'll hear the reports mm-hmm. and everything like that. You know, my people's are, mm-hmm. my people's are let me know what you... happened in the building. And... Mm-hmm. How did you see, how did you like about the two twins playing cornerback? I mean, the two brothers playing corner. Brown, the, but the both Brown brothers. I, I like it. They didn't give up. They didn't give up um, big plays. Um, I think they both played solid. I think the whole defense entirely played solid. I was impressed. The, the mm-hmm. defense is what got the yeah, game for me, me to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Mark Fletcher, too, yeah, man. Agree. Showing these young recruits yeah. that Miami's going after. If you ain't committed to Miami and you ain't committed to the thoughts of actually coming in and play, getting play time, and you don't believe Miami when they say you could come in and make an impact right away, that, that was proof last night. Mark yep. Fletcher was the first um, freshman to score a point. Now, um, obviously, Cody Young scored the first one, but Mark Fletcher, he scored the first rushing touchdown and the, for, the first mm-hmm. freshman to score. Yeah, so yeah, amen. I feel like when you look mm-hmm. at the um when you look at the stats for the running back last night too, it was even across the board. Everybody ran for like almost nine nine rushes each. Mm-hmm. I like we that. got four backs. We got four backs. Mario said it in the press conference pretty well last night that hey, we got we got it like back in the early 2000s. Oh, I love that. I, I love that because you know what? That means that you know what I'm saying, like defense right you know what I'm saying? they don't know they 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 don't know what running back is gonna come out there you know what i'm saying and that's how it should be you know what i'm saying we we can freaking bruise them up with mark fletcher and then after that you know what i'm saying don train can come in or you know what i'm saying someone else can come in and do their thing and that's what i like you know and yeah. and that and that's how we want our you know what I'm and that's you know, and the championship stuff like that. Cause you know what I'm saying? We 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 are running backs that can you know switch up and out. You know what I'm saying? I like that. But I feel like, you know what I'm saying, like Porter, um the cornerback that we got Porter, I think he's a really good player. Yeah, cause he 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 clipped up that dude that was trying to run the post route and he kept up with him and he denied the ball from him. So I feel like Porter's gonna have a good year for us. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. I think mm-hmm. this, the defense is, is something to look out for. Yeah, it's true. You know, defense wins championships. That's the old saying. Yeah. So That's I got true. a few stats up here. And obviously it's mostly one-sided because, you know, Miami totally dominated that game. Uh, first downs, of course, you know, Miami had 26. Miami of Valle only had nine. So that's good. Um, great ratio, you know, if you're dominating defense. Third down efficiency, they were two for 12. We was three for seven. Um, we, we, we need to improve on that, you know, especially against lesser and inferior opponent like Miami of Ohio. Um, obviously, the yards, we almost put up 500 on them. They, we only allowed 215. Um, Passing-wise, we gave up too many passing yards to them, in, in my opinion, um, with 164, while, you know, we put up 243. So... We need to clamp down on teams like that, you know, or get them secondaries going a little bit better. Um, 
rushing, we only allowed 51 yards while rushing for 250 yards. So it's been a minute since we had this kind of a um, rushing attack in, in the game. So it was great to see, like I said, with all them running backs. Um, yeah. Penalties, penalties, eight penalties for 60. We definitely got to clean that up. That's that's atrocious. That's atrocious. And, of course, the one interception um, thrown by Tyler Van Dyke trying to go vertical, um, kind of floated it, um, needed to put just a little bit more on it. But, hey, it is what it is. It happens. You know, so let's go over to the, the box score. Hey, T2, yeah. are, are you going to watch any of so Oh, yeah, of Today? course. Of course. I'm a college football fanatic, my guy. I, I don't just watch Miami. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with the channel and everything being big three, I focus on all three, all three schools. I also watch UCF on the low, you know. Just to you know, keep it in state. Um, a lot of people don't realize mm -hmm. that UCF in the near future, from a recruiting standpoint, they will be a threat. They will be a threat. We don't want to acknowledge them. We know they ain't got no championship. They got a clownery um, for claiming a championship, but they are in a great position. They're in Orlando, it's a great city. A um, lot of resources. You know, a lot of NIL potentials, and they got great coaching staff too. So in the near future, and oh, let's add on the Power Five status to that with the Big 12. So in the near future, UCF will be a threat. So they're a team that I low key keep an eye on, just don't report on them. But yeah, I'm gonna definitely be watching games. I mean, UCF on Thursday night beat a team 56 to six. The yeah. same Kent State that um, Georgia had problems with. So. You know, they're going to be a team to look out for. We, we saw them, you know, beat Florida. We saw them um, beat them out in, for recruits and everything like that, beat out Florida and Florida State for recruits. So it's already the, the beginning. Who knows? Maybe in the future this will be big 42. <laughs> Who knows, man? But anyway, um, that quarterback from Miami, Ohio, man, he wrote a check that his ass couldn't catch. I'm not sure if you saw the video. Did you see the video? Lakers all day, you there? They might have some bad internet. Um, let me let me put the link in the chat. Anybody else want to come on? The link is in the chat. Y'all can click the link. Yeah, man. Bahamas in the building. What's going on? Say good morning, T2Y, and good day to everyone in the chat. Appreciate that, boss. Good morning to you. Great win for us, man. Absolutely loved it. We ain't got a word about nobody talking about who the, the real Miami is. I think they already knew, but they just got a reminder. So, yeah, great win for us, man. Great win. Now, like I was telling y'all with the running back, if you look at the um stats, Henry Parrish, nine carries. Mark Fletcher, nine carries. Um, A.J. Allen, nine carries. Don Chaney, eight carries. Almost even all the way down. Almost even all the way down. Now, obviously, Henry Parrish had a better night than all. But, you know, for Mark Fletcher being a um, a freshman, I, I'm actually going to give him the MVP of the running back room. Um, A.J. Allen was out there breaking ankles. Breaking ankles. Somebody, yeah, yeah, somebody almost, um, you know, collapsed ankle, knee, thigh. Hip, everything. <laughs> that boy, that boy might need a, a whole new um lower body. God dang it, boy, he got he got twisted up. Um, yeah, but um Henry Parrish nine carries for um ninety yards, one touchdown. Basically, he was averaging ten yards a carry. Now, I don't want to get too excited, of course, because you guys already know that's Miami of Ohio. That's lesser. That's inferior impo opponent. The real test is going to be coming up soon with Texas a and um, this week, next next week coming up, whatever. Um, then after that, we'll we'll kind of chum chum it down again, you know, with Boston College and T um, Temple. So don't want to get too hyped, you know, over beating uh, Miami of Ohio. This is what we're supposed to do. We did what we were supposed to do, but. 
he was averaging 10 yards a carry. 10 yards. That, that's amazing. If you can have a running back average that kind of yards, you can't lose. You can't lose. You can't lose. Mark Fletcher, similar numbers. Um, nine, nine for 76 with one touchdown. We had three touchdowns from the running backs. Three different running backs scored a touchdown. Um, only one didn't score with the nine, nine carries for 47 yards and um zero touchdown. That was um AJ Allen. And I know a lot of you had concerns about, you know, Henry Parrish. I've seen the chatters. I've seen a lot of fans was concerned that he can't go, you know, he can't break. He can't, you know, get them extra yardage. They're saying that he's a basically, he was basically a, um, a first initial contact, go down kind of guy. Yesterday, I think he proved otherwise, man. Um, You know, his longest was 37 yards. That's a great, that's a big play. You know, twenty anything 20 yards or more is considered, you know, a big play. So, hey, he had that. Uh, Mark Fletcher with the 26. And then you got Don Chaney busting out a 20-yarder. So, we got running backs that was putting up, you know, good numbers, good numbers. It's great to see. Great to see. Sarge, what's going on, boss? What's going on with you? See you in the building. You know, the real Miami right now. We talking about the real Miami. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got to listen to the chit chatters about who ain't this and who ain't who the Miami is. They, I think Miami of Ohio fans know now who the real Miami is. They already know it's great to be a Miami Hurricane. Yeah. Receiving wise, too, the ball got distributed a lot. Ball got distributed a lot. Obviously, some of you guys was going to watch Restrepo because a lot of you guys said Tyler Van Dyke like the lock on them. And, you know, it'd be like that. Now, Cody Young, four for 79 with a touchdown. He was the only receiver to um, get a touchdown in that game. Pretty good number. Xavier, um, five receptions, um, 68 yards. You got um, Jacoby George, of course, six receptions for 56 yards. So, And then you go down the list, Riley. You know, um, Riley Williams, of course, freshman, one for 18. Tyler Her Harrell. One for 14. Isaiah Harden got one. Ray Ray got one. And Brashaw sure got one for zero. I don't know how that happened, but that's tough. But um, yeah, the ball got distributed, man. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight different receivers. Eight different guys got catches. You know, so it's obvious to say that we're gonna pass the ball. Um 20 receptions, 20 receptions for 248, 43 yards, you know. So it's clear to say that, you know, we're definitely going to run the ball. Ran the ball yesterday um, 36 times. Uh, we got 20 receptions, not counting the ones that, you know, wasn't, um, you know, caught or whatever. Because if you look at look at all, we, we ran the ball 20, we threw the ball 25 times, 25 times, and 20 of them was caught. So not a bad ratio. Not a bad ratio. That, and that's between Tyler Van Dyke and, um, you know, Emory Williams. So that's not a bad ratio. 20 for 25, that's 80%. So 80% of our passes yesterday was caught. That's great. That's great. Man. So obviously we got to start prepping Um, in the next coming week. You know, we're going to start talking about Texas A&M. We're going to break down some of their games and everything like that. I think Texas and them is supposed to play today. So they don't play nobody, to be honest with you. They, they play a cupcake team today, and I'm going to watch it just to see what, what you know, what they got to the offer. I'm going to see the dynamics of their offense and the dynamics of their defense, you know, where their pros and cons are. And then, you know, sometime during the week, we're going to break them down. Uh, Monday, of course, you know, we'll do the Miami Monday, even though it's a holiday and everything like that. Then we'll we'll talk, go more into depth about Texas A&M, definitely. Um, oh, man, Master of Dreams. Master of Dreams, what's going on with you? Um, you know, we want to know. I can't relate with you today. We, we, we ain't in the same uh, room today. You know, I'm in the one and all room. You in the O and one room, you know, that's a dream. That's tough. That's tough. Um, shout out to all the Gator fans that actually showed up today. <laughs> shout out to all the Gator fans. The Florida Utes. <laughs> Look at you. Oh, man. 
Florida went up to Utah and got uted. You know, it, like us Jamaicans like to say, they look a you them. They look a you them. <laughs> Man, that's tough. That's tough. Let's let's keep it moving. But um, yeah, we don't really necessarily have to look at any stats on Miami Ohio. There almost wasn't any. Um, but yeah, man, um, we did pretty well. Um, tackles, tackle, uh, total tackles. Francisco Maui Goa led the team with tackles with five, two solos, and of course he helped out on the tackle for loss. Sakari Couch with the four tackles, two solo. Um, Jaden Davis he had three tackle, three solo. Um, James Williams, of course, and Cam Williams both had three tackles, two solo. Um, KJ Clark looked pretty good. Listen, the linebacker position looked good for Miami. Looked good. We we don't get to say that too often, but it looked good. I didn't um I didn't see too much from Corey Flag. He did have a tackle last night, though. I didn't see too much from him. Um, Najee Kelly, very explosive, um, very disruptive. Um, of course, um, of course, um, Leonard Taylor was doing his thing out there. Leonard Taylor with the boneheaded, um, you know, penalty. Mario addressed it that, hey, it's unacceptable. But, hey, man, Key Mesador with the two tackles. Everybody was out there doing their thing last night as a team, as a whole. You know, Wesley Bassaint, that's a monster. That's a monster. So, man, I, I loved every bit of what I seen last night. Bobby Washington, the freshman, man, two tackles, one solo. You got to love it. You got to love it. Uh, True Seminole in the building. What's going on with you, boss? Uh, man, y'all got LSU coming up, man. Y'all got LSU. Y'all, listen, Seminole fans, y'all going to have to pick a side. Y'all going to have to pick a side. You see that you want to join the Miami Hurricanes in the 1-0 gang? Or you could join the Florida Gators in the 0-1 game. But tomorrow night, we're going to find out. We're going to find out if y'all gang gang or not. <laughs> you know, if you're going to join the good guys down in Miami, or you're going to join the baby lizards up there in Gainesville. But, hey, remember now, y'all told me in the offseason, the game's got to get played. I feel good so far that the game's got to get played. <laughs> hey, man, shout out to y'all for tuning in. Oh, uh, man. But our, our O-line looked good all around. I'm, I'm very excited for what I've seen. Like I said, guys, I know it's only Miami, Ohio. I know, I know, I know. We're going to get a true test this week coming up. Now, let's just say we go out there and we put on similar performance. You know, we beat Texas A&M. I think Batum Cookman, sure win, and Temple, sure win. And the sky's the limit after that. The sky's the limit after that. I do think we, we're years away from, you know, winning, dominating, and all that kind of stuff. But I think we'll be very optimistic about this season. Um, you know, not coming on here and saying, hey, we winning 10 games. Hey, we winning the ACC. We, we making the playoffs. Nothing like that. Nobody take that from this slide. Um, I see the work Mario's doing. I see the culture. I see the improvement from this time to last last year. So it is what it is. Um, we're still making boneheaded mistakes on the penalties. We got to clean that up. I think they'll definitely address that in practice this week. They'll definitely address that in film study. Some guys will get called out. It is what it is. Hopefully they'll you know the culture that we're building, hopefully they'll they'll see it as a learning moment or whatever and um, do better. That's it. That's it. Do better. Um, it was special, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, the great way to start the season, it was special. It was special. One at a time, one game at a time, 11 more to go. So, like I said, um, guys, the link is in the chat. The link is in the chat. Feel free to hit the link. Um, come on in and give me your perspective on what y'all seen last night. Don't just listen to me talk. Come give me your perspective. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from. I want to hear your opinion. I want to see what you saw. You know, tell me what you saw. Tell me what your concerns are. Tell me what what you what you like, what you didn't like, what you want to see more of, what, what you want to see less of. The link is in the chat, baby. 
Now, obviously, there's some great games coming on. <laughs> True Seminole, what's going on with you, my guy? What's going on, man? All right, all right. Tell me, man, what you, what's your thoughts, man? What you saw from Miami? Pros, cons? Hey, man. Head on, my head on. Miami did what they needed to do. They went down there and handled a nobody team, and that's, I mean, that's what, what more can you ask for? No, 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 no. Before I let you continue, who's the real Miami? I guess this year is the down the one down south in Florida. All right, continue, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it would have been hilarious to uh, if Ohio, oh. Ohio had won, but it, uh, oh, trust me, yeah, I, it would have been hilarious for you. It would have been hilarious <laughs> for your fan base, and y'all would have y'all would have had earned the right to the clown us for the rest of the year. Oh, uh, the rest of eternity, to be honest. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, so, but good thing for Miami, they didn't lose. They didn't lose. They actually won and dominate. Look good winning. I mean, that's that's all you can ask for. This a game like this. Uh, I'm more looking forward to y'all's Texas A&M game. I do. I do. I'm rooting for y'all. Sadly, against Texas A&M because I hate the SEC. So, I do want to see y'all beat is Texas. It just the SEC, or is, or is it also Jimbo involved? Oh yeah, Jimbo involved as well. That, that's definitely that is definitely a factor. Man. But uh we'll see. We'll see how that happens. Uh great game. Hit that like button, guys. Oh Teach, appreciate uh, it. Teach appreciate you it. Was a great oh, guy. Thanks, for, thanks for reminding me, man. I gotta upload my um my little video thing. <laughs> well, take it easy, man. Just wanna holler at you. Oh uh, pro pros and give me some pros and cons. Uh pros about the game? Yeah, pros and cons. Um, pros about the game, I do like. I mean, obviously, y'all returning running backs. I love it. They're, they're really good. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke still looks good. Uh, Sharp, not the best quarterback in the ACC, if Slim Shady's listening. That's Jordan Travis. But he, he's okay. He looks good. Yet to be determined. Uh-huh. We'll see. I, mean, I see everybody in the chat talking about we beating one of the – Three FSU or Clemson and UNC. We'll see about that. But oh, we, I think North Carolina State. We could write them off. I think we could write off. Oh yeah, North NC Carolina State? State. I mean, y'all. Yeah, they looked uh, terrible. Y'all don't play North Carolina. Yeah, we played North Carolina, but a lot of people were saying that NC State would be a trouble for us. I think we'd go ahead and write them off. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know that game against UConn. I don't I don't, I don't really. Yeah, it, it ain't sit well with me either. But hey. yeah. Didn't sit well with me either, but uh, that's about all. I, I was really mostly watching the uh, Georgia Tech game with all them, so I, I, I've yet to see the highlights for Miami. Yeah, yeah. But looking Let's at the box back. score, Let's go back to Thursday real quick. Now I'm, Ooh, I'm, I'm, okay. I've heard, I've heard, and I know you've heard. We got the best running back duo in the country. <laughs> what was your thoughts on that best duo in the country? Man, 13 yards rushing. Whew. I'm intimidated. <laughs> now, I'm intimidated. Do you think it was the oxygen? Do you think it was oh. the atmosphere? Yeah, yeah. I think the altitude got to him. Yeah, you know, Utah's just this uh, top five team, man. You know? <laughs> third string quarterback, that's hard to beat. It's hard to beat a third string quarterback. Like I said, I'm going to ask you now. Are y'all going to join the 1 0 game? Or are y'all going to join the 0 1 game? You know, I'm going to call it right now. We're, we're joining the 1 0 game. Uh, All right. LSU, we whooped them. We beat them. Well, we didn't whip them. But we beat them last year in their home. They come in our home in Florida. We run this state, obviously. No offense. <laughs> you said we run this state. The cap. That was definitely yeah. cap. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but y'all did y'all did we'll win see. both games last year, so hey, you can say that. Ain't too much. Ain't too much people can do to challenge that right now. <laughs> but no, my final thoughts on that game for Sunday is I, obviously it's going to be a close game. I'm not going to be surprised if LSU wins, and I won't be surprised if Florida State wins. But I'm picking FSU, obviously. So. Now, nah, JAA says, um, ain't no way LSU loses the FSU. 
You got anything to say we'll to see. JAA? Uh, they said the same thing last year. So we'll see. All right. All right. So, man, Miami won. Florida lost. Florida State is um, pending, loading. We're up, we're up next. We're up to bat next. We'll see what, what we do. All eyes will be on y'all tomorrow. It's Y'all game will be singled out, kind of like how ours in Florida was singled out a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, what game are you watching today, though? Uh, probably a little bit of the Tennessee game. Uh, I want to watch North Carolina, South Carolina game, definitely. Uh, now, after LSU, who, who you guys playing? I can't remember. After LSU, I think we move on to conference, I believe. I have to look at that again. I think you guys play a cupcake after them, don't it? Do we do? Uh, okay, hold on. Let me, let me pull up y'all on the schedule. Real I real. can't think of the schedule right now on my mind. Oh, yeah. Go to say schedule. My mind just went twisted for a second. FSU football schedule. Here we go. Um, you got Southern Miss. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Southern Miss. I forgot about Southern Miss. Yeah. And we then do have after Southern night. Miss, you go to Boston College. Now that's that's the one I was thinking of. And then Boston around off September, you go to Clemson. So. Hey, to that one. Hopefully, guys, we can catch Clemson up here. I think if you guys um, beat LSU, then um, Clemson will be your next challenge. And then after that, it's you probably won't get challenged until you play Pitt in Miami. Yeah, probably then. And then uh, yeah, the ACC not, championship to look forward to. <laughs> yeah, we're just we're just gonna skip over Florida. They're not a factor this year. Oh no! Hey, uh, shoot. Well, y'all don't play them this year. Don't don't y'all play Florida next year? We play them twenty four and twenty five. And then after that, we don't know. We don't know when the next time we play them. It'll be a mystery. Huh. Well, we'll see. Anyways, I'll let you go, man. I got some things I gotta go take care of. All right, man. Appreciate you for coming on, man. I appreciate you for having me, man. Alrighty. All right. Let's see. So obviously, we took care of business with Miami of Ohio, Texas A and M is up next. So let's um let's head on over to Texas A and M, see who they play today, what time they play, and everything like that. I know some of you guys only like to watch Miami football. I know some of y'all are only Miami Hurricane fan. You can't stomach to watch other teams, but in this cold, rich college football, you gotta know who you playing. You gotta know who you're going up against. You gotta know the weapons they have. You gotta you you just can't go into these games blinded. Now. Texas a and them, of course, they're ranked number 23 in the country going into their first game. Um, right now, they're, they're playing New Mexico tonight on ESPN, so 7 o'clock. Um, I know it's New Mexico. I know it ain't no, no big-time game and everything like that. I know they're expected to blow them out, but definitely, definitely watch that game. Definitely see what we're going up against Evaluate, going going in that thing with your evaluating glasses on. Look at their focus on their O line, focus on their D line. You know, look at they they skill players, see what they got, compare them to you know what we have already on our team, and then you guys could kind of see you know where we stand, uh, how we would game plan for them and stuff like that. That's, that's what I would tell you guys to do. But I'm definitely going to watch that game. Um, of course, we play them. And then afterwards, they'll play a cupcake, and then they'll they'll go into some SEC play. So it's definitely going to be Texas A&M at 7, 7 o'clock, tuning in to that. Um, top 25 matchups on today. Of course, you know, a lot of college football is going on today. So we're going to look at some of the top 25 matchups real quick. Um, I'm going to put the link in the chat again. Like I said, for any fan that want to come in and give their thoughts and opinions on what they saw from the University of Miami, what your thoughts on going into Texas a and all that good stuff. If you want to even um, chime in on some of the games that's being played today, you could do so. 
or even um, the game's playing tomorrow, Florida State. Y'all can talk about that if you want to, too. Florida State fans, Gator fans, um, college football fans in general, y'all are more than welcome to hit that link and come, you know, speak your mind. Speak your mind. Open mic. All right. So, obviously, we're going to look at, you know, the schedule, of course. Um, top 25, like I said. Today's games that are being played. Um, to kick it off at 12 o'clock, um, you got Michigan playing East Carolina. That's going to be on Peacock. So if you guys got a Verizon, um, you know, subscription or phone phone line, you can watch Peacock. You, you should have Peacock for free. I got Verizon. I got Peacock. So I know you guys should, too. It comes with your, um, with your, your phone line or whatever. Um, also at 12 o'clock, you know, less, less than an hour and a half, a, a little bit over an hour and a half from now, you got Tennessee versus Virginia, ACC versus SCC. Um, that's on ABC. That's on local channel, guys. If you got an antenna, you can watch that. So that'll be good. Also on Fox, another game that's going to be, you know, all eyes on Deion Sanders, you know, primetime. Can Colorado, you know, with that rebuild team, stand up to the the team that got beat sixty five to seven in the national championship last year against you know Colorado, man, against Georgia, you know Georgia Georgia beat the bejesus out of them to claim their second championship. So it's gonna be interesting to see what Deion Sanders looked like in game one. You know, all you Florida State fans gonna be watching and hoping and praying that um, you know. Travis Hunter don't do too well because I know y'all know y'all by now. Y'all are secretly hating on him. That's tough. Um, Oklahoma, of course, you know, Lincoln Riley and them boys. Not, I'm sorry. Brent Venables and them boys <laughs> going to march out there this year. Um, playing a nobody in Arkansas State. Arkansas State, I'm sorry, but it is what it is. Um, y'all ain't y'all ain't been nobody, so it is what it is. Um. Iowa, Iowa debuts against Utah State. I think Iowa, this might be an upset. You know, if I had to pick an upset for the week, I probably would pick this one. Ole Miss versus Mercer. That'll be a, a massacre in Mississippi. I think um, Ole Miss will handle business. It is what it is. OG Kane, what's going on, my brother? Nothing much. Nothing much. Just having a little cup of coffee before this college football start today. Uh, the flow is yours, man. Go ahead, hit me with it. What you got? Um, you was asking what I thought. Realistically, uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't think we're there yet. You know, uh, the new players coming in and what uh, Coach Mario is trying to do is evident, and that 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 can be seen with the younger players and the talent he's bringing in, but. I don't think we're quite there yet. Probably going to take another year or two. Um, Before you go any further, OG, did you see that press conference last night from him? No. No, I did not. Now, it got to the point where they asked about the um, unsportsmanlike conduct that happened on Leonard Taylor. And Mario yeah. got angry. He got angry. He was in there. And then he had to tell the reporter, listen, I'm not mad at you. And then the whole place started laughing because he got he – got, the angry emotion. Yeah, like, well, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure he got angry because when it, when it happened during the game, and uh, before they said who it was on, I'm like, whoever that was on, they finna catch hell, especially at the time and you know uh, the 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 game situation that it was in. I'm like, they finna catch hell, whoever it is. And then once I find out who it was, I'm like, oh, catch hell. but yeah, that's 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 any kind of coach that's like that. If that was Saban, same thing. Kirby, same thing. Basically, any coach would have would have uh, had an issue his fit about that. So, my, but no, I didn't see the the press conference after that. Let me see if I can run that for you. Let me um, just to bring up some context real quick before I let you finish your thoughts. Let me see if I can get right into it. YouTube killing me with these commercials.
right. I got it. I got it. I got it. All right. Let me go ahead and um, switch views here. Um, inside the U posted this, um, the press conference, of course, inside the U. This is for fair use and commentary purposes um, under YouTube and, you know, the governmental laws of fair use. If you got a problem with me sharing this video, you hit me up on my email so we can talk about it. But fair use. All right, let's go. And of course, this app want to play with me today. <laughs> All right, look, obviously, there's going to be mistakes to correct from every game, but considering this is the first one, you don't know how it's going to go until you get out there. Just, you know, did, did it go kind of like you, you thought it, it should go tonight? Well, I, I figured they were going to be tough to run the ball against. Again, because you, know, you watch them play Kentucky, they held Kentucky to 50 yards rushing. They made it difficult to score. And they've got a big offensive line over there. Um, so we felt that you know it'd, it'd be a physical battle, and you have to just keep wearing on them. The defense are going to have to make some stops. The penalty to prevent us from, from scoring down the red zone was a monster penalty. Uh, certainly gave them some life and put three points on the board for them and gave them hope. Uh, but after that, it felt like we started taking control of the game finally. We had some opportunities early, and we didn't. So it was good to see our team respond and, and start you know, making enough plays moving the sticks enough, making enough stops to start taking control of the game. Mario, I think all four are running back. They had nine carries, maybe Don had eight. I, mean I want to get to the point where you talk about the specific Leonard Taylor penalty. Because he got heated. That's fine. I thought that's what you was doing. I, when he was talking about the, the penalty, I thought, oh, right, here they go with the commercials again. YouTube, y'all overdoing it now. Anyways, I'm sure back, he's really hard on himself. He was really efficient. He put us in the right. Nah, he talking about to Tyler Van Dyke in the interception. I should have. This this is my bad. <laughs> you just got me mad at the, at the sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. That's when he was talking about it. So probably somewhere right around right there. With that fifteen yard unsportsman like penalty. Here we go. So is that something you look at once in a while and say, Hey, you know what, we played a great game, the game was ever No, I think it's unacceptable. I don't think we ever go back to that stuff. That's that's what what, what does it do? Right. right? We're not we don't we, we don't want to revert to that if we you know no, there's no place for that. I'm not mad at you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just got me mad at the, at the sorry. Well, it's just like you say, that coaching moment for the team for the next week. Yeah, I'm going to coach his butt all the way home. I promise you that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so that was his response to the little Taylor. Yeah. Mario said, you, you know, got me mad all over again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, respectfully. I mean, what I mean, what was it for? I mean, you crying to the refs about being held. You get held every play. You know what I mean? So I mean, especially like in, like I said, in that crucial moment. I don't care if it was just Miami or Ohio. You a coach? You looking at your play? You know, it ain't about who you playing against. I mean, you gotta be disciplined. You can't be doing stuff like that. But anyway, back to what I was saying. I, like I said, I see, I see the, the uptick. But like my my my, my opinion. I mean, we 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 not there yet, but we we working on it. I see I see a lot of improvements, which is a good thing. I just don't see. I don't see no ten and two, and and all that kind of stuff. A lot of the fans saying, no disrespect to them, you know, they got their opinions, but I still see, you know, seventy five, eight and four, which is better than five and seven. But I see what they're trying to do. As long as they keep bringing in the players. You know that they that would uh that they think that's gonna you know fit their scheme and what they're looking for and talent will we'll be fine. But as far as we there, nah, nah, we ain't we ain't there yet. You know, uh, I know it's the first game and all that good stuff. But at halftime, what was it, thirteen three? Yeah, Chris. Chris in the chat, he don't agree with you. He's saying that, that's fine. Chris, Chris is fine. That's fine. That Chris having his opinion. I, hey, that I'm talking about me. So yeah, that, that's fine. 
he can disagree. That's that's cool. No problem with that. But I, that's just that's just me. And we'll see at the end of the season how the season turns out. So Chris is welcome yeah, to like it. I said, I'm gonna watch that Texas and them game, and I'm gonna just take it one game at a time. Now if we go out there and blow out Texas A&M, I'm going to have a few questions. Was was Texas A&M that bad, or are we that good? And then, you know, some of my opinions might change going into a few yeah. games. You know, I might, that, I might start opinion. pumping my chest a little bit. I'm, I'm, you know? I'm basing my opinion off the first game against Miami of Ohio. That's what I'm basing my opinion off of. You can bring Chris in. That, that's Man, you know me. I'm not. I ain't tripping if somebody dis- disagree with me. Hey, Chris, the link in the chat. If you want to come in and tell us why we going ten and two from based on what you saw, but I'm I'm with OG on this one. I don't see no ten and two right now. I need to see. I need to see Texas A&M. That's what I need to see. Muck City, Muck City, agree with you. We're not there yet. That's improvement. I just don't think we're there yet. We're not quite there yet. Off the first game, I just don't. Master, don't Master of Dreams agree. He said, I don't see 10 and 2. But then again, he is a Gator fan. He ain't never going to see 10 and 2. <laughs> we could go out there and beat Texas A&M 100 to 0. He'll probably say no, 10 and 2. But oh uh, man, a couple good games coming on today, man. You you tell I know you're definitely gonna watch that Texas A and M game tonight. Yeah, I'm watching, man. You know I like college football, man. I, I just don't watch my games. I watch college football, so I'll be watching a lot of games today. So good morning, Miss Ellen. How you doing today? Ellen V, the producer. It's, so you got a few. Good, you know what? Let, run run through it with me, OG. Run through it with me. Oh. Um, Michigan and East Carolina, that started at 12. That's going to kick off today. Cool. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm going Michigan, of course. I'm, I, you probably feel the same. That's on Peacock. Yeah. Tennessee versus um, Virginia. I think Tennessee win, but I, I kind of want to see what Virginia, you know, has to offer this year. Uh, Tennessee, they, I think they definitely going to win. Yeah. Uh, they don't have uh, what was a hooker, so I got to see that quarterback, how he, you know, I mean, I've seen him a couple of times in games, but it was mostly hooker. Um, if the game starts out slow, um, I think Tennessee's going to pull it off, but uh, if it starts out pretty quick with uh, the offense that uh, – Tennessee head coaches run. I think yeah, I think Virginia ain't gonna have a chance. But if it starts out slow, it might be a good game up until like the second half because I don't think Virginia has the depth to keep up with the uh, UT Tennessee. Now twelve o'clock also on Fox. You got you got to put that back foot down. Now. You got primetime Deion Sanders, Colorado making their debut versus TCU. What you think? <laughs> <laughs> Man. TCU total domination or, or Dion shot the world today? Uh, I think Colorado is going to come out hyped as they want to be. Um, I think they ain't fan for a rude awakening, though. Um, I think TCU is going to definitely win. I'm not going to give a comment on how they're going to win. <laughs> But I think TCU definitely going to win. But at first, you know, they're going to come out all hyped up, everything, you know. But uh, once reality sets in, I think uh, TCU is going to uh, win by a large margin. And, uh, Miss Ellen said that laugh said everything. <laughs> that laugh said everything. Uh, TCU for the definitely whoop the brakes off on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like Prime, man. I like Prime. And uh, this is his first year there. And uh, he had to revamp basically the whole team. Nah, dog. I don't see what well, a lot of a lot of Colorado fans are seeing this. I, I let's see. let's go into a let's go into a hypothetical. Let's just say Colorado do win the day. What does that tell college football? 
Uh, just tell, I just tell college football to prime. Say we come. Yeah, I think if he if he go out there and win today, the and probably have a good season, let's just say that. I think Colorado, you're gonna start seeing Colorado become like a destination. Now, nah, all of a sudden, now nah, I'm gonna tell you that my my opinion again. It's always my opinion. If Colorado has a good season this year and he beats TCU and all that good stuff, Prime ain't going to be at Colorado long, y'all. Tell you that right now. He ain't going to be at Colorado long. Hey, I like the take. I like the take now. He got a five-year contract, and it ain't too much Somebody to buy out. Buy that out. He ain't going to be at Colorado. It ain't too much to buy out. So, he I think he got like, what, what is it, like a five-year, 25 million or something like that? I don't know what that man getting all I know is he won't be in Colorado long. I know where he probably won't end up, though. Huh. <laughs> Not in Florida State. My God, speaking of Prime, Prime came out, I think it's sometime this week, and he told the plane up. He's not a no. Mm-hmm. Out of his own mouth. This was his own mouth now. There was a reporter in the Miami Hurricane. She said, hey, I'm a hurricane. You're a no. Prime said, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I thought it was where you graduated from. I'm an, H- I'm an HBCU. He literally denied Florida State. Shut them down. Disco. Man, he knew, Man. He knew what he was doing. Prime's calculating. So he, he knew what he was doing. I loved every bit of it. Um, yeah. Young Seminole. Young Seminole in the building. What's going on with you? What it is, man. Man, what's your thoughts on Prime dissing y'all? Man, that's why I hopped on, man. Look. Ooh, that was heartbreaking to hear him say that. Oh. He don't know. But he's kind of talking two sides out of his mouth, Maggie, because you can show all the videos on Twitter and YouTube of him talking about how, how he's an old, you know, up until he, before he gets the Colorado job. Listen, my Make guy Prime mind. told y'all straight up. It, I'm it in business, Tallahassee, man. yo. It was, I'm not it was, hanging with was, the Seminoles. That was a business move, man. Make up your mind. <laughs> that was business you know move. Not. I mean, ever since he's gotten to college football, he's been kind of giving y'all the middle finger. Yeah, for real. But I mean, that's that's a recruiting pitch, I think, really. Yeah, and plus, right, plus, gonna... where he's at. I mean, you know, he can't just be claiming, you know, yeah, I'm a no this day here at Colorado. I mean, like I said, my opinion, I think I just business moves. You know. Yeah, if he keeps Florida. showing love to Florida State, that, that just pushes more recruits towards Florida State. Yeah. So yeah. But y'all go ahead, man. I'm gonna in, in, enjoy the rest of this espresso and the show and watch game day while I'm listening to you, man. So y'all, y'all, hey. y'all some college football. Appreciate you, OG. All right, so let's jump back into some of these games and then we can get into a conversation, whatever you want to talk about, um, young Seminole. So um Hawaii State at 3 30 on CBS, another local channel. You guys can watch that on Hawaii State, Indiana. Big Ten play. Ohio State is a huge favorite, 30 and a half to be exact. You know, that's at 330 and 8 on oh, CBS, guys. Um, Ohio State, I think they'll definitely win that. They got a lot of hype going in this year. It might be a playoff contender. Who knows? Um, another team to look out for, but they don't really play nobody. 330 on Fox, Texas, Texas. They'll take on Rice, food, like um, Josh Pate like to call them. Um, Notre Dame played Tennessee State. Nothing to see there, guys. Notre Dame will win that thing easy. Um, a lot of cupcake games today, guys. A lot of cupcake games. Six o'clock on ESPN Plus, SEC Network. You got Georgia versus UT Martin in um, Athens, of course. That's a that's an easy win for Georgia. Nevada, USC, easy win for USC. They're a thirty-eight point favorite. Um, Kansas State. Um, Big 12 champion, you know, taking on a nobody in um, southeast um, Missouri State. You know, when I call y'all teams nobody, if you guys ever come across these videos or listen to these lives, know that I mean it exactly how I say it. Y'all ain't nobody. <laughs> get angry, get your team better, and play better. It is what it is. But my main attraction tonight, Texas A&M, their 38-point favorite over New Mexico. I know that ain't going to be much of a game to watch, but I'm definitely going to watch it. Middle Tennessee, Alabama, nothing to see here. Alabama by 39. That's the um over – that's the – um the whatever, the favorite or whatever. Good game. Good game alert. Good game alert. Good game alert. NBC, West Virginia versus Penn State. 
Now, I do think Penn State will win this thing. Penn State is a 20-point favorite, 20-and-a-half-point favorite. That's going to be a good one. Oh, 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 hold up, hold up. Good game alert again. Good game alert again. North Carolina versus South Carolina. North Carolina is ranked number 21 in the country. Drake May makes his debut for 2023 against South Carolina. This is the Duke's Mayo Classic. Duke's Mayo Classic. NC State is, I mean, I'm sorry, North Carolina is only a two and a half point favorite. So this definitely will be a good game. Might be the primetime game to watch. And it's on ABC, guys. If you got a little bunny ear, an antenna, you can definitely watch this game. And uh, nothing to see here. I know that South Alabama, Alabama two lane game Alabama. might be good. TT what? I ain't watching that. That'd be good. That be, hey man, them, them them group five teams is good to watch sometimes. That'd yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch back and forth and look at the stats on that one, but I ain't watching that. I'm definitely gonna be watching either West Virginia versus Penn well, State I mean, I'm with or you. North Carolina versus South Carolina. I'm with you. I'm just saying the group of five teams they be fun to watch sometimes. All right, all right. And then, um, of course, you know, Florida State take on LSU tomorrow. Who else? Who else play tomorrow? Who else play tomorrow? Uh, eh. Northwestern and Rutgers, I think. Uh, Duke, also Duke and um, Clemson. Duke and Clemson. And um, San Jose and um, Oregon State. Oregon State. Oh, DJ Ungulele. He'll make his debut at Oregon State. So, hey, we're going to see some good games this weekend, man. So, obviously, Florida State versus um, LSU, primetime, Sunday night, ABC. It's on It's on local TV, guys. If you got a bunny ear, you can watch this game. Listen, you can go to Walmart right now and buy you a bunny ear if you ain't got no cable. You can go to Walmart right now and buy you a bunny ear. Probably will cost you like 15 bucks, one five. Hook it up to your TV. Move that thing around. Make sure you got ABC. Make sure you got NBC, Fox, all those channels, local channels, CBS, ABC. You can watch the game just like that. Most of the people that stream that have streaming service like YouTube, um, YouTube TV, uh, Fubo, Fobo, whatever you call them, um, Slang TV, and all those those services. If you have that antenna, guess what? You're like maybe four or five. Maybe six. I think six is the maximum I've seen it. You're like six seconds ahead of these people. So when you see a play and you're like, oh, they didn't catch it. Maybe six seconds later, they they be like, ah, oh, they didn't catch it. So you're ahead. Um, I've done live shows where we, we've been watching the game together, and I'm like ahead of everybody. So get your little bunny ear if you ain't got one, man. If you, if you don't want to pay for cable and all that, just like me. I don't pay for none of that. That's tough. And um, also... The variable option uh, might be a little bit shaky, but sometimes they actually put the games on YouTube illegally, illegally, but it is what it is. So what's your thoughts, Young Seminole? You watched them hurricanes last night, man. I Pros think- and cons. What's your thoughts? All right. I ain't going to ain't gonna cap it, man. I'll be real with you. Y'all actually looked pretty decent last night. Now, it was against Miami, Ohio, but compared against like Middle Tennessee like last – Last year, y'all played pretty decently last night. Y'all defensive line looked good. Y'all offensive line looked good. And y'all run the ball really good last night, too. So, I can definitely see 8-4, 9-3 for Miami this year. I, I take back, I take back all, all, all the shit talk I talked about on the offseason. Y'all looked good yes, yesterday. I ain't going to lie to you. All the shit talk that I talked about Florida State. I know you're going to go with this. I ain't taking that. I know you're going to take that. I ain't worried worried about you. You know, I'm going to be the big person. The only only thing I'll take back from from shit talking, y'all, if y'all go out there and beat LSU, I'll take back all the LSU shit. I know you will. I know you will. Don't worry. I'm going to take it. I'll take it all back. I'll give you a little props, and then y'all fans will come on here, and y'all will still talk trash, like like Zozuchi in the chat right now talking about Miami 6 and 6. And then I'll be like, you know what? All the compliments I gave y'all, throw that in the trash. And then I'll just go to, go go back to trash and y'all. I will say this though, y'all still gonna get your ass beat by us. So. Uh, it's we gonna go, to be determined. I, yeah. To be determined. Well, and you can say what you want. To be determined, one game at a time, baby. Beat 
Miami we'll see how y'all play with 6 a.m. this week. Don't don't worry about beating Miami in week, whatever y'all play. Let's <laughs> worry about LSU, okay? Got one day away. I ain't on the football team. I ain't going to worry about LSU this week. <laughs> I'm not the one playing. <laughs> I ain't the one playing. Building up to the game, man, what's the anxiety like? Because I know Ooh, for us. It's eating. Who? Let, let, okay, let, let's look at it from both both sides. Florida State win tomorrow. And let's look at it from Florida State lose tomorrow. Give me both of your answers. Like what like what what I think or what I think the media gonna say. What you think and what the media go what you think the media gonna I'll, say. I'll Give t- me both. I'll tell you exactly what the media gonna say. When we beat LSU tomorrow, they're gonna say, Well, LSU wasn't as very good as we thought they was, and they this is only the second year under Brian Kelly. He's still getting his stuff together, and we still gotta see something out of Florida State that they 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 better than they was, but we don't know if they ready to be up in that upper echelon yet. Uh, they're still overhyped. Um, then we'll, if we lose, they'll say, "See, Florida State was overhyped. I told you they shouldn't be ranked up in top ten. LSU so much better. Jane Jane Daniels, Heisman Trophy caliber quarterback. They got just so much talent on, everywhere on the field. Blah 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 blah. That it's it's gonna be that. All right, now give me your take. Oh, well, when we smash LSU in the mouth, and it'll be proven like all of us said on the offseason, they wasn't ready. And then people that ain't in the media, they'll, they'll give a little bit more respect to, to what we got on, on, on the team. Now, give me your take if LSU will be all. We should have shut our damn mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I ain't gonna lie, I love that one right now. Yeah, but it ain't gonna happen. Ha! <laughs> Gotti! Ha! <laughs> it ain't ain't gonna happen though. Man, that was that was simple and precise. Hey. Now oh man. Oh yeah, yeah, Miss Ellen. Um streaming is definitely delayed. Most definitely. Cause I I'll be watching the game with these guys. I think it was national championship. Me and Sarge was live, and I'm calling plays and I'm telling them what's going on. And a lot of people in the chat were like, "That ain't happened yet. That ain't happened yet." And they're like, "Oh, it just happened like you know maybe ten seconds later." It it kind of make people when, when you're doing streams like that and you're ahead of everybody. If they caught a whiff of your stream and they're looking at their TV and especially if they got their heavy anxiety. They're going to be so caught up in wanting to know what happened next that they're going to watch your stream the whole time, even though they could watch it on their their, their own TV. Because we all want to – we have this uh, mindset that we all want to know what's going to happen next before it happens. So if your options is to watch it 10 seconds behind me and I'm already calling it out, you're going to tune in to me because you want to know what's going to happen before it happened on your TV anyway. Facts. So – you know, to be like that. Oh man, I lost my train of thought. I was about to do something. I lost, oh yeah, let me upload this this video on here real quick. Upload this onto my um onto my um my new my 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 clicks. You know, you know when I click it and and it do the little stop, it gets some help and all that. I got a new one to add on there. I got to delete one of these, though. You know what? I'm going to take out the Florida one. I'm going to take out the Florida one. Let me add this one to it. Let me see if it'll open it this way, or do I have to um, change the fonts and change the... um... Oh, no, perfect. It's uploading. All right. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Gotta redo it again. We got a new sound, new sound click, basically. Let me see if it's this one. Let me see if it's this one, or if not, I'm going to have to. Yep, that's not it. So. I'm going to have to do some um, work on my end to get that up on here. <clears throat> but, guys, man, what y'all thinking today? What y'all thinking today? A lot of games being played. Um, 
like I said, it's open mic. The link, I'm gonna put the link back in the chat again. Um, you guys give me your thoughts and opinions on today, what y'all looking forward to. What any um anybody got any upsets today? Anybody got any upsets? Even if you don't want to come on, you can put them in the chat. What do you what do you think? Let's at least have one upset today. What do y'all think that upset is gonna happen? Where well, y'all think these upsets gonna happen? Sarge, don't tell me you keep Martin go upset, Georgia. <laughs> no, nah, I got uh, I got Virginia beating Tennessee today. Oh wow, Virginia yeah. beating Tennessee. Yeah, Virginia, man. They, you know, you know what happened to a, a few of their players. You know, they was bullying one of the freshmen, and um, three of their players got killed, and another one got injured. There was a shooting what? on the bus. Yeah, yeah, there was a shooting on the bus, man, at the University of Virginia. So, you know, they're going to have heavy hearts. They're going to be playing for their buddies that passed away. And I got Virginia beating Tennessee today, man. So it's not too late, man, to go to your uh, local sports betting uh, online website and, and, and put a couple dollars on Virginia, man. I, they got a new quarterback. Uh, I got Virginia. They, they had a, a pretty decent defense last year. I got Virginia beating Tennessee today. Oh, snap. Virginia beating Tennessee today. My goodness. Any, any, hey, any other upsets? TCU, maybe? Nah, 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 nah. No love for Prime? I mean, I got plenty of love for Prime. I'm born and raised right outside of Atlanta. I love Prime, man. I mean, I've had... I've had his 49ers jersey. I've had his Falcons jersey. I've had his Cowboys jersey. Like, I love Prime, man. Prime, I mean, the only player to play in the Super Bowl and the World Series. Come on, man. <laughs> I grew up wanting to be like Prime time, man. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right. So when, when you show love to your team and they see that you show love and they recognize the love, they kind of do you a little favor every now and then. Yeah. So, let, without further into without further in without what what what, 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 what yeah, let's, just, let's, let's just do. get let's just get to it right now and three two one let's go like share subscribe all right hey, like share subscribe and make sure to like share and subscribe all right, all right. <laughs> new intermission baby new intermission Shout out to uh, uh, Blaine Gabbert, little little brother, man, who said that uh, the real Miami is in uh, Oxford, Oxford, yeah, Oxford, he, Ohio. He didn't even throw a touchdown yesterday. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to show him on September 1st. Yeah, we're going to show him three points. <laughs> we're going to come down there and do exactly what Florida did in their bowl game last year. <laughs> and uh, anyway, shout out to Brian Mertz, more, man. One more time for the people in the back, man. Appreciate the players showing love, man. Appreciate it. Like, share, and subscribe. All right, appreciate it. Like, share, and subscribe. And make sure to like, share, and subscribe. All right. All right. Yeah, man. My kids, my kids had a phenomenal time yesterday. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, I'm gonna upload some of those photos, of course. Um, I got my, I, I got some, I got a pair of gloves. They're signed by mm -hmm. All American Cam Kitchens. Also, shout out to my um, my favorite player on the team. You know, Miles Moo Young. Shout out to that guy. That's my favorite guy. Hell of a game yesterday. We the real Miami. We ain't got to worry about that troll. <laughs> you know. Shout out to the Red Hawks, man. <laughs> we'd have, we would have lost that game, man. It would have been a total vibes today. It would have been T2I running the whole the whole show. I would have been mad, pissed. Everything would have been aggravating. Nobody can see that. We're all, the, uh, we're all the Florida fans, man. They they hiding today, man. Oh man! Shout out to my boy Waste Bro, man. My boy in the chat say, "Oh, we need y'all to beat Texas and them." <laughs> don't say that too loud, my guy. Some of these Florida State fans they don't want to hear that. They'd rather us lose to Texas and them, man. That rivalry goes deep. But hey, appreciate it, man. I hope we do beat them. Um, Anybody seen BB? I ain't seen BB 
I, I mean, I, I talked to BB on um, Twitter in the DMs or whatever, but other okay. than that, <laughs> I ain't seen BB. I seen BB in, the, um, in a couple of spaces. He been listening, but he ain't really been talking. <laughs> what about Sam? Anybody seen Sam? I haven't seen Sam either, um, but Sam probably will. Sam, Sam probably will tune in tomorrow when I do Florida the regular Trucker. show. Florida Trucker had a lot to say, too. Florida Trucker, man. Hey, it's some. Uh, I think Young Seminole. I think it's some people looking for you, Florida Trucker. If you're listening, they they want their money, man. They <laughs> want their money. Oh man, Waste Bro, you're not gonna like my answer, my guy. You're not gonna like it. He said, "Who you got winning, LSU or Florida State?" <laughs> do I do I got a sound bite for some tigers? I ain't got no I ain't got no tiger sound bite, but I hey man. I think that game could go either way. I'm going to be honest with you. I think you could win. I think you could lose. Me personally, <laughs> from a rival standpoint, I'm picking LSU. Well, now, Brian Kelly already said they're going to beat the heck out of uh, FSU. He said it. Now, obviously, you guys could win this game. I'm giving you all that. I'm giving you all that. Y'all can win this game. Y'all got the pieces. Y'all got the talent. Y'all can win the game. But I'm picking LSU. It is what it is. If you win the game, guess what? I'm going to come on here tomorrow, and I'm going to give you guys your props. Not, not tomorrow. I'm sorry. Monday. I'm going to give you guys, because y'all play Sunday. I'm going to give you your props. And then your fans going to start talking trash, and then I'm going to go right back to being me and just hating on y'all. That's that's how it works. <laughs> you know, because most of the time when I get Florida State compliments, it don't work out too well. They don't take – Florida State – is like a girl. They don't take compliments well. When you treat them like shit, they love it. But when you treat, when you get them compliments and flowers and all that, they, they treat you like shit. So, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. <laughs> be like that, you know. And Wastebro, man, um, I do the Wednesday night um Seminole talk, man. Seminole show is dedicated for Seminoles. Y'all come on here, give your thoughts and opinions on your team, break them down, you know. Put out all the good stuff. You know me, I'm just going to put out all the negatives. So I give y'all the opportunity, you know, to talk talk Seminole football, man. So, you know, feel free to come on, on on a Wednesday night, you know, talk some Seminole football. Tell the people how you feel and everything like that. It's open to all Seminoles, man. That's that Seminole Wednesday night. So, you know, um, most of the time it's around 7 o'clock. Seven, eight, seven, eight, round seven or eight, round that. How many time. fans? How many fans did y'all have? T two R. What do you mean in the in the stadium? Yeah. For it to be a Friday night, I was actually shocked, my guy. I expected that, less. That's what I'm saying. It's a Friday night in my head. <laughs> I expected less because you got to think about it. There's a few factors that um would make that game a lot less packed than it was. There's Friday night. Um, football with high school, you know, some of the, some of the Miami fans, they do, you know, got to go to their kids game instead. It's Labor Day, Labor yeah, Day weekend. Um, yeah, DJ, see, see, he a Seminole fan, DJ a Seminole fan, and he know how many we had in the stand because he definitely was watching. We had about <laughs> 49,000 people in there on a Friday night when they, they could have been doing a lot more things. A lot of folks went out of town for Labor Day. Yeah, and it's a holiday weekend. So there's college football going on on a Friday night. The club scenes is popping. Oh, another factor. It's raining like crazy. It's raining like crazy. A lot of people don't want to get their hair wet. Don't want to come out there and be wet up and, you know, catch the flu or have a cold or, you know, that kind of thing. It's always but, raining in Miami, man. That ain't nothing new. Yeah, so it was it was good, man. Yeah. It was good. Hey man, hey, appreciate you for for stopping in, man. Like I said, that Wednesday night, come through, my guy, come through, come talk Seminole football, uninterrupted. The mic is all y'all's. Y'all tell me whatever y'all want to tell me about y'all team. I don't, I don't try to troll y'all or nothing like that. A little bit at least. <laughs> <laughs> man, Island boy, what's going on with you? Um, yeah, man, Seminoles, man, y'all are up next. Y'all are up next. Florida shit to bed. Miami handle business. It's up to them Seminoles right now. The state of Florida is popping right now. Recruiting. Games are being played did, uh, now. Did, 
the UCF play? The UCF play? UCF. UCF. We talking about Mr. 56 to 6 UCF? UCF, <laughs> UCF handled business. UCF handled business against Kent State now. Shout out to the Gus Bus, man. Shout out to everybody man, on the Gus Bus down there. I don't there. know, Sarge. UCF might go 12-0 this year, 15-0 this year. They beat Kent State 56-6. to I know, man. <laughs> Let me stop. I can't even I can't even make myself believe that. But uh UCF, man, they handle business. They handle business. Now I was listening to Coach Hayes yesterday. Uh what, what my boy was talking about. Uh he said that if uh, you know, if Colorado makes a bowl game and if Miami doesn't or they disappoint, then he's go Buffs, man. He, he a Colorado fan. <laughs> That's tough, man. I don't, <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't believe that. You got to listen to I think you. I think you. I think you'll be in his feelings a little bit, disappointed a little bit, but I don't think you'll you, – you can't change from the U, man. It's in our blood. It's hey, man, we might said, be mad. We might be mad at the team sometimes. We might be mad at the coaching staff, but we ain't never gonna flip. He said, "If y'all disappoint and Colorado makes a bowl game, then he gonna have to make the switch." I heard his live yesterday, man. Man, he ain't gonna switch, man. He ain't gonna switch. I, I'm just saying, it's not me talking. That's him talking. He ain't gonna switch. We 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 don't switch. That's a Florida right. State and Florida thing. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Speaking of, speaking of that, man, are you allowed to be a two teamer in college football? Hell no. To the no, no, no. Anybody hey. that tells me that they are a two teamer in college football, stop it. Get some help. Put a, put a one in the chat if you're a fan of two teams. If you have like two different jerseys in your closet name, you're a fan of two teams. Because it's a lot of, a lot of people. Who have jumped on this prime train have admitted. I mean, they've admitted that they're bandwagon buffs, they're bandwagon Colorado fans, and they're two teamers. They're not a fan of Colorado. They weren't even around this time last year. But now that now that prime is out there, they're 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 Colorado fans. They bought the merch. They they you know became content creators and they're a fan of two teams. DJ Ferg says, um, nothing wrong with it. Now the other Florida State, <laughs> the other Florida Mark State fans, <laughs> the other Florida State fans said nope. Then the other Florida State fans said, "Nah, one team, that's it." Ferg is a two teamer. So who your second team, Ferg? We got, we got Anthony in the building. Anthony said, hey, T2, what do you think about the ACC adding three members? Um, we have to um go out to the West Coast. Oh man, we spoke. I spoke about that in the video where I basically break down what happened. All that good stuff. Basically, 12 votes. 12 votes was what they needed to get in. They got the 12 votes. At first, they got 11, and then they redid re-meetings re and all that, and then they got the 12 votes that they needed. The Somebody three, flipped. Somebody got paid to flip. Now, the three votes that they did, did not get to come on in, Florida State, Clemson, and North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> Florida State, Clemson, and North Carolina. Those were the three that voted no. So, obviously, right now, we got Stanford, Cal, and SMU as ACC members. Me, personally, I'm going to tell you this. I like it. I actually like it. Because if we didn't get any members, we weren't getting no more money, plain and simple. Bringing them in brought $70 million a year. Hey, if y'all go to Cali, y'all play some games out there in Cali, T2, I might meet you out there, bro. Seriously, man, because Cali, bro, if you travel to Cali for some games, I might meet you out there, man. Now, let me tell you how this benefits Miami. Mario Cristobal just came from Oregon. He was out there for a while. He's recruited those areas, and he knows a lot of connections in those high schools. So for him... Going out that way, guess what? He could get some recruiting in. He could get spend some time over that way. Now, I don't think we'll play Cal and Stanford in the same season, home and away like that. I think we'll we'll probably play one at home, one that way. Right. Basically, right. basically saying if we play Cal at home, we'll probably play Stanford away. Right. And right. Stuff like that. SMU, um, we'll probably go to Dallas. They'll come to the Hard Rock. It is what it is. 
Um, I think that 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 also gives Miami time to go into Texas and do their thing. For SMU, that's a great deal for them, although they do get kind of a shitty end deal, but they, they was willing to do anything to get in this conference. Um, obviously, you know, Power 5 status came with Stanford and Cal, but SMU didn't. So SMU decided that, hey, the first seven years in the ACC, we will not get paid. We would do – that's what we're willing to do just to get into – Yeah, because they already got money. They already got money. They exactly. don't care about they the say, money. Listen, that's money, y'all. We don't really need your money. We got boosted. We got oil. We got all this. It just boosts our status, and it gives us the opportunity to say we power five, to say that we could compete with Texas A&M, Texas, um, of course, Baylor, Texas Tech, and TCU. We can compete with them now with a power five status. Cal and Stanford, of course, you know, they was kind of the, the, the left out guys. They they took less money too. Yeah. 30, 30% less. They'll get yeah. paid 30% less than all the teams in the ACC just to join in. And Cal like, and Stanford, Cal and Stanford gonna start recruiting Florida players too. It works both ways. And I'm not sure how many years that'll be for they take 30 less, but nonetheless, it's gonna be a couple of years that they take 30% less than every other team. So it's it benefits the ACC. We're stuck in this deal for till 36, unless somebody <laughs> gonna cough up all that money to the grant rights and ESPN. I think it's beneficial to us. Not only that, look at this from an ACC standpoint. If two teams are to leave, especially Clemson, North Carolina. And um, Florida State, who has been threatening to leave, will be below 15 teams. It'll kind of, you know, put the conference at um, risk. Them boys will be looking at it like, hey, we're about to lose out on billion, billions of dollars. So FSU fans in the chat, do y'all want to code to the uh, SEC or not? Yes or no? So basically they're like, you know what? Let's make this conference a lot um, more, I want to say, Secure. So add three teams just in case two or two maybe leave. That could actually pay out that, that grant of rights money. Florida State ain't going to do it because they ain't got that money. I'm going to say that now. Um, let's just do that. Let's grab these three teams to make sure the numbers are strong. So if two of these guys leave, we still got the 15. I don't think the ACC is done. I don't think they're done. Got to keep in mind, Oregon State is still out there. Um, Washington State is also still out there. I will not be surprised. I'm telling. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I will not be surprised if those two teams actually end up in the ACC. Also, then we're going to have a, a great conversation about who wants to go all the way to Washington State and who wants to go all the way to um, Oregon to, to watch games or play games or whatever. We hey, might- that'll be terrible though. If y'all have to go to Washington State or Oregon, like when it's November, December, whoo boy, it's gonna be freezing. I guarantee there. you, we're probably gonna have some conversations about the Pacific and the Atlantic. <laughs> we're probably gonna have to change the name of this ACC thing. <laughs> you know, Pacific Atlantic Coast or Conference or something. <laughs> or just by the what about just the just the just the coastal conference, you know what I'm saying? And College later, Coastal Conference, Triple so C. We'll just, we'll just call it the, the Pac C or something. <laughs> and next thing you know, we'll be smoking on SEC and Big Ten Packs and all that kind of crap. <laughs> oh, man. But, anyways, man, college football about to come on in about 50 minutes. 50 minutes. Um, why, is college game, why is college game day in North Carolina? Why are they not in Colorado? I mean, why are they not in Texas for TCU you gotta, Colorado? Man, you got you to gotta look at it, man. It's the showdown of the Carolinas. It's the showdown of the Carolinas. Yeah, I, mean, I understand it's the showdown of the Carolinas, man, but which is a bigger game, Colorado, TCU, or North Carolina, South Carolina? Which, you which gotta, game you, you got to look at? You got to look. Wait, wait, who? Colorado TCU is that game? Uh, is that a bigger game than um, no, no, North ain't. Carolina no, South Carolina? No, most people looking at Colorado TCU from a Deion standpoint, from a Deion Sanders standpoint, prime time. Yeah, but if you look at North Carolina versus South Carolina, that's more deeply rooted beyond the Deion hype and the TCU last year getting smashed by Georgia. Kapow. <laughs> 
<laughs> you think it, you think what you, you talk think about? They lost a national championship that that hurt them. You think that hurt their their they, their they, they picked up a um a transfer portal team, got to the end, barely got to the end because they did lose that conference championship. The um the committee was very lenient in letting them in, which I did tell you guys that they would anyway. Um. Other than that, there's nothing much to talk about TCU. There's not. There's no hype on them going into this season. Nobody expects them to do nothing. Yeah, nobody Colorado has said nothing about TCU. Of, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Other than Prime, Colorado just came off a 1-11 season with no history, really, to go up against TCU. So when you look at North Carolina versus South Carolina, though, you got SEC versus ACC. You got two teams that, you know, Desperately need to prove themselves. Desperately hate each other in, in, in them Carolina. Who's the real Carolina? That's the question. We were talking about who the real Miami. Who's the real Carolina? Who's the real Carolina? I got I got South Carolina, man. I don't think I'm North Carolina, South has Carolina for the win any too. type of defense at all. North Carolina is a two and a half point favorite, but I'm taking South Carolina for the win. Yeah, I'm taking South Carolina. Who's bro. South Carolina quarterback again? Spencer Rattler, man. Who's North Carolina quarterback again? Drake May. Drake May sound like Mayo is a Duke Mayo classic. <laughs> I'm going against the Mayo. Listen, man, light on the Mayo today. Light on the Mayo. Light on the Mayo. Light on the Mayo. And shout out to all the uh Tennessee fans, man. They they know exactly who Spencer Rattler is, man. Tennessee versus Virginia. What can Virginia actually do against Tennessee? They're predicting to blow them out. They're yeah. Now, you yeah, just said you. that you think Virginia is going to upset them. I don't know where they get the pieces to do so or the talent. One of these top 10 teams is going to lose today. I'm telling you. I Somebody in the, the top 10 is going to lose. I'm going to go a little bit outside of the top 10 and say the top 25 with Iowa versus Utah State. That's the that's one that I could possibly see the upset happen. But everything else that we saw on that you know list of games to be played today, uh, I don't see too many upsets. You want to say Indiana beat Ohio State? No, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to give you another upset. I'm going to say. You know what? Dude. No, 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 no. Forget it. I'm going to upset all of the Ohio State fans today. <laughs> I got Indiana for the upset. I got Duke beating Clemson today. I got Indiana for the upset. All you Ohio fans, tune in. Somebody. Go tag a Hawaii fan on Twitter right now. Tell them I said that Indiana's going to beat their butt today. Let them know. And um, Brent Venable, I don't like you. I might pick I might, I might might pick Arkansas State. No, Arkansas. don't do that. Don't do that, T-Swift. Do <laughs> yeah, let me stop while I'm ahead. <laughs> but I got, I got Duke beating Clemson, man, by a field goal. Duke beating Clemson by a field goal. Oh, that's a Monday night game, by the way, guys. Yeah. Duke. Man, you standing on that? I'm standing on that. I'm standing on Virginia winning. I'm standing on Duke winning. Jordan Bowman, where you at, man? Where you at? Jordan Bowman. Somebody get Jordan Bowman up in here. And Duke. I can't stand I can't stand Clemson because they always talk trash about the SEC, bro. Duke beating Clemson. Clem I think Clemson's what? A, a 14 point favorite? 12 and a half? I don't know what the spread is, but I got um, Duke beating them. Let me go. On. Let me. Get, I gotta get that up on. Let me get that up here. Let me get that up here. Lee Corso picked South Carolina. I think he picked South Carolina. What happened to it? Wait. Um. The older guy that does the the pickings or whatever. Yeah, Lee Corso. I thought he retired. No, nah, I think he's still. I think he's still on the crew, man. man I know he that, had a stroke. He had that, a stroke. He had a stroke and it threw him off, you know. Last year was was kind of hard to watch, man. Yeah, he can um, barely he can barely talk. Zozuchi <laughs> says Duke is like Miami of Ohio, too small and not enough depth to beat Clemson. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, the the line went up. Clemson is a thirteen point favorite. It, it was on um, twelve and a half. Now it's thirteen. It was twelve and a half. Yeah, so but it's it's at Duke, right? It's not at Death Valley. Yeah, it's in Dorman, Dorham. Yeah. So it's a it's a home game for Duke. Um, LSU's um chance to beat Florida State went down too. It's not only at two; it was at two and a half. Now it's only at two. 
But Brian Kelly said they're going to beat the hell out of FSU. That's what he said, bro. Yeah, he did say that. Now, remember I told you guys Florida versus um Utah? Remember they dropped it down to seven, and I told you guys, listen, man, Utah going to win that thing by double digits. Yeah, I more. said Utah by 18. Yeah. I said 10 or more, and I was correct. So all you Florida fans that I try to save y'all some money that went ahead and went against T2I, y'all should go in the chat right now and apologize to me. Make it very sincere, too. Hey, what about that dude who tweeted, man, how small that Utah Stadium was? <laughs> oh, shout out to um Pr Princely. Princely. That's their that's one of their guys, Florida guys talking about some little little ass stadium. <laughs> Utah fired back after the game. This little ass dub. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to yeah, Utah, you man, a, with the clapback. You had a little ass three points in three quarters. Now, nah, Utah should have really clapped back and said, they little ass baby lizard. <laughs> you know, Utah had eight starters out that game. Eight. They didn't even have their starting quarterback. Yeah, they, they their quarterback was a junior who was a walk-on, and the dude was a pig farmer, man. So if you if you in Florida and you eat pork, shout out to you, man. Now, BB told me that um, Jason Marshall was the best DB in the country, the best corner in the country. He a future All-American. In the first play, I see him get blurred. Yeah, first play of the game. Uh, Post-pattern, 70-yard touchdown, man. First play of the game. Listen, for all the Florida fans, the first play Utah called from the line of scrimmage, they had touchdown. that. they had that one – that one moment where they all looked at each other and said, it was at this moment we knew we fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it was at this moment. I mean, then, it was like, you know, like a bomb, like, boom, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but guys, hey, man, go go barbecue, get it all done. If you're in Florida, go barbecue right now before, the, before it start raining again because it's been raining all week, um, you know, with the whole hurricanes thing that happened or whatever you know go go get your barbecuing on and um of course you know at 12 o'clock games are gonna be played all the talk in the in the off season that's over with now you know you know season right now we'll do recruiting after the season when it gets this recruiting time we can talk about recruiting you know all the recruiting talk is done it's game time you know <laughs> shout out to dan mully man who only recruits after the season <laughs> oh yeah, and, uh, oh I'm glad to see totally not depressing the um in the comment section talking about some oh they want to know they don't know what it feel like to be be a no win team. Well, guess what we want to know too. And hey, shout out to TND man. Shout out to the uh the JSU uh Gamecocks man. Shout out to them man. What you thought about um Georgia Tech man? Georgia Tech. What you thought about? Man, C Dog, bro. You see this? You should have seen the look on C Dog face, man. C Dog went live for the whole game. Uh, the game was actually in Mercedes Stadium. It wasn't over there, you know, next to downtown Atlanta in Bobby Dodd Stadium. It was down in the Mercedes Stadium. Uh, they had the lead, man. Their fans was cheering, man. They got they up what 20, 28 to 13, 27 to 13 at halftime. They celebrating in front of their fans at halftime. I'm like, don't y'all know y'all got 30 more minutes to play? <laughs> <laughs> so they oh, get shit. shut out. They get shut out in the second half, 23 to 0. <laughs> they didn't score a point in the second half. Uh, they yeah. had a chance. They had a chance to go down and kick a field goal and take the lead with like three and a half, four minutes to go in the game. And the quarterback got sacked. He got he fumbled. Uh, Louis, uh, Louisville jumped on the fumble, and then the next play they broke for seventy four yards touchdown. Nah, see dog, I don't know what it feel like to be on one right now. <laughs> I don't know. You lost to Louisville thirty nine to thirty four. Let's look at some. Let's 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 get into this. Yeah, they scored a touchdown late and went for two and didn't get it. I think they scored a touchdown with like fifty nine seconds left. And didn't get it. Then they kicked the onside kick, didn't get it, and that was game time. So um shout out to all the boomer bees out there, man. I really appreciate y'all for um, you know, showing up and having all y'all fans go to the Mercedes Stadium and taking the L. 
Yeah, man. Shout out to the free refills. Yeah, man. You know, you buy a drink at the Mercedes Benz Stadium, you get to refill that thing as long as the game's still going. As long as the game's still going, yep. But this you game, can go down there, you can get you a haircut, you know what I'm saying? You can chill in the lounge, smoke you a cigar, chill out, man. Mercedes Stadium is nice, bro. Listen, Georgia Tech forgot that there was a second half in football. <laughs> Georgia Tech, I can't. I, I'm not, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not finna break down no Georgia Tech. See, dog, you're not finna bait me into breaking down y'all team. Y'all are terrible ass trash pursuit. I, 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 ah, flat. So, yeah, I, they didn't, they didn't get Affleck shut out in the second off. half. They, they scored one touchdown late in the second half, but the second half score, what, 26 to 6? Yeah. Now, the, across the board, Look, my goodness, how do you win a game being one for 11 on third downs? And still one. Oh my goodness, one for 11 on third downs. How do you win a game like that? You outpassed them. They still beat them, though. You outpassed them, but they outrushed y'all. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Penalties, you only had two penalties. They had seven. Bro, the first half, Tech was killing them. Tech was killing them in the first half, bro. My goodness, you put up 28 points in the first half and then forgot football was still being played. I mean, that's what I'm saying. They they dancing on the sideline. They jumping up and down. They was hype going into halftime. And then man. second half, man, Louisville said, not so fast, my friend. <laughs> Uh-oh. Florida Trucker, where you at? Oh, Florida Trucker in the building? No, no, no. Pack him up, um, Seminole fan. He looking for Florida Trucker. Florida Trucker, where you at? <laughs> yeah, man. He had, he had a lot to say a couple weeks ago, bro. Man, Georgia Tech is... Let, let, let me let me give you a story time for floor for um, I'm, I'm gonna just make this story up for Georgia Tech. So you go out on you go out to the club, you got this chick, you know, she beautiful. You go and you get you get this chick, of course. You know, you bought her a drink, you got the number. She said, forget the number, I'm gonna come home with you tonight. Like, oh, oh, yo, 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 what it do? Hold on, hold on. Let me finish my little story. So All you right. get the so you get the chick, you know, you got the number and everything. You thought maybe you're going to call her later. She said, nah, 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 I'm going to come home with you tonight. So you're like, all right, cool. You hop in your whip. You take her back to the crib. And you know what Georgia Tech did? They pulled out the rubber, and they just couldn't get hard enough. <laughs> Working with a wet noodle. Enough. They just couldn't get hard enough. Working with a wet noodle. Yep, that's what happened. The girl got mad and left. And that's the end of that story. Georgia Tech lose 39 and 34. There it is. Or 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 make it so bad they got to the door and she changed her mind at the last minute, bro. You about to go upstairs and smash nah, you know nah, 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 nah. This was a short thing, my God. This was a short thing. But then that second half happened. <laughs> this was a short thing. Say though, don't did. don't don't tell me you done lost the loyal fan in, in Florida Trucker. Nah, they'll be they'll come back around. They like no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, if Florida would have won, they'd have been in here though. If Florida would have won, they'd have been here. Oh, no, no, I'm trying to you watched the, watch the movie Friday, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You you remember what he say? Um when Debo come around, I'll be quiet. But when he <laughs> leaves, I'll be talking to you. Hey, I I, I that, just, that's Florida fans. Get the first week when they lose, they disappear. They wait for it to um they wait for the for every for the smoke to clear and then they start popping, popping back up again when they think I'm the smoke is done. You know, they run. Now I'm trying to collect trucker, he's he, I think he's good on the money, but you just gotta catch him in here. Yeah, yeah, I definitely gotta catch him. I'm on my way to Orlando right now for the for the big game tomorrow night. Oh man, speaking of Orlando, man, shout out to Canes forever. Shout out to Canes football talk. Man. Yeah, last I'm on night, the way. I'm on the way know, there right now. The, he's always on the channel last night, met up with him, you know, <laughs> took a couple photos, you know, 
all that good stuff, man. Met some of the players last night and everything. Hey, shout, shout out, out to, to the guy, South Carolina fans. Shout they pour man. They pour man. Shout out to the 407, man. Shout out to Orlando. <laughs> yep, I'm on the way right now. I got about an hour left. An hour drive. Man, uh, Marquise Williams. I learned last night too. You know, he's from the um that Orlando area. Well, I probably knew I already just don't remember. You know, I'm coming out of Ocala. Okay, okay. Shout out to Ocala, man. That's where my boy is from, man. Jalen Carter. Man, but last night was special. Right, Jalen Carter from Ocala. Yeah, man. Damn, I did not know that. Yeah, man. You know what school he went to? I don't know what high school he went to, but I know he's from that area. I know Miami. They got they got um they got uh Bruno Tommy Kinsler from Ocala. Yeah. Yeah, they got him from Ocala. Yeah. 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 Now let me ask you this, um, Mr. Seminole. What was y'all bet? What was y'all bet? We bet fifty on Utah and Florida, and fifty on Florida State and and LSU. Okay. So oh, man. so he, probably, he had a, I got it. I got it. So he probably. Oh, he probably wait to see if we lose. He probably and see if y'all lose. Then he gonna he be real hurt when high. we win. Then he gotta send me a hundred. <laughs> so then, so then when, when y'all lose tomorrow, it'll cancel out. But if y'all oh, win, damn. but if y'all win, it's double. Then you know, y'all yeah, know, he'll know. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it, it's gonna be double. He gonna he gonna get his feelings hurt. Oh uh, damn, Rudy. Now, he, he praying, damn, he praying Rudy. that we lose tomorrow. He praying. Now let me ask you this: If y'all lose tomorrow, is it fire Norville? No, not at all. Oh damn, Billy, you're the only one. If y'all lose tomorrow, y'all still going to the playoffs? Who said anything about playoffs? A bunch of y'all fans. <laughs> a bunch of y'all fans, bro. They, they, listen, they listen, must listen. Just be, those must be casual fans that's that uh -oh, only uh -oh, around. They're in the chat right now. <laughs> they, they only around, they only around when, when they're doing good. I, I, hey, bro, they're in the chat right they, now. They, we're going to have a good year. We'll have a good year. I just, I, I, I don't see, I don't know about playoffs. That's. You got to pump your brakes on that. We got to get past man. Clemson first. We got to get past Clemson and LSU first. Before Listen, all fighting. the Florida fans right now, they're calling They're calling Billy, Billy Tagger. They're talking about firing Billy. I'm just I, I saying. Th yeah, I th I, me personally, I think they should have kept Dan Muller. I, I don't think Billy is ready for the SEC. But Billy been recruiting, man. He, he got the number four. You can recruit all you want, but when you start losing, think, are you, you going to keep I'm gonna that class? I'm going to be honest. This season and next season is stacked against Billy. If Florida it, it, wants it, any kind of success with Billy, they're going to have to give him time. This That, that fan base. Florida don't gonna, wait. Next year, Florida they're going to be disappointed next year, too. Because If telling he have you, another schedules, season like last year, he gone. I'm telling you, them schedules is not in their favor when you're trying oh, to rebuild. You're right. You, did you see that the 24 schedule? It's even harder That's than what I'm telling them. they got this year. I told them this year, you're going for and 8 Probably worse. If they if they do that, yeah, next year you're gonna next year you're gonna you're gonna be similar to that too. But if yeah. you don't give Billy until like maybe 26, your program Florida, is about to go to dirt. Florida not, if they fire not Billy, think about this. If they fire Billy, they're gonna lose half of that team. All of them blue chip players that he's recruiting that he could probably put they, together. They're they gonna they gonna possibly lose them with the season they're about to have. They they look horrible. Florida, good. if Florida fires Billy before 26, they're going to set themselves back 10 they years. They got, listen, they have Graham Cracker Mertz at quarterback. All right. Shout out to Mertz, man. Mertz did all right, man. Uh, man I ain't going to lie to you, man. That Graham Cracker's hit a little different. <laughs> they got <laughs> Graham, Graham, Graham Cracker Mertz. The reason, the reason I say that is because my last name, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it, they 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 schedule don't they schedule don't get no easier. You gotta play Tennessee, LSU, Georgia, Florida State. Though I I see all those as losses right there. Y'all let me know in the chat though. Is um uh, Golden Grams the best cereal ever? Yeah, man, I'm a fan of Golden Grams, man. Not the I best. Think Golden Grams, I think Golden Grams. I, is I, the best I can see you kind of biased though, cause y'all share share a, a common name. But you know me, I got I gotta go with Cinnamon Toast Crunch. They all right, but they ain't no golden grams. <laughs> if, no gold. if, if, if there's called cinnamon toast grams, you change your mind. I'm a fan of golden crisp, bro. I'm, I'm old school, man. I'm not a fan of cinnamon. 
Not I'm really. a golden. I, I'm a golden Chris Sugar Bear fan. I'm old school, bro. Hey, I like them snacks. King, King, King. Vitamin. You know what? It's, 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 it's almost lunchtime. But y'all, let me know in the chat, man. What's y'all favorite cereal, man? What's y'all favorite cereal? Let me know in the chat. What's your favorite cereal? Remember that King Vitamin? Oh, I love King Vitamin, but <laughs> hey, don't Got think no, but it, it, <laughs> listen, he, King Vitamins was one of them cereals that you ain't need no sugar for. You ain't need no snacks. Sugar. Smacks and Golden Crisp, man. You can't beat them, man. Can't get enough I'll tell of that. You one thing, though. Hey, people I, be hate. I, I love me some Captain Crunch. People be hating, but Raisin Bran, Raisin Bran is good. I don't care what y'all say. Hell no. <laughs> he <said> Raisin Bran. <laughs> Raisin Bran. <laughs> Raisin Bran good. I don't care what y'all say. Man, that fiber. That fiber. Stop it. Get some help. That fiber will go ahead. <laughs> you on the toilet seat, though. Raisin man. Bran. Hey, on, on a serious note, Special K, um, Fruit and yogurt cereal. It, I, I promise you, that'd be the best cereal you ever tasted. I like it. I like it. I love I like that it. cereal, man. I like it. Oh, man. And I, I, like I, I bust the whole little, box um, down by myself. With the little sliced almond nuts in it. I, I bust the whole box hey, down. Hey, T2Y, have you, had the, have you had the Captain Crunch where it's just nothing but Crunch Berries? Man, had a roof of your yeah, mouth raw. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Tell, you, tell <laughs> your whole mouth up. Yes, All sir. Crunch Berries, you, you, I, I promise you, after you eat that, the rest of the day you're gonna be you're, you're gonna be using your tongue to play with them wounds in the top uh, of your mouth. <laughs> like little ripples. Hey, that sounds like the lizards, man. Maybe maybe Florida ate a bunch of Captain Crunch, man. <laughs> nah. They, you, you know what I thought was funny about Florida all season when we lost Air Norton in recruiting to um Hawaii State, they was on Twitter singing, Tell me how I'm supposed to breathe with no air. And then next thing you know, they on national TV sucking on air bottles. Yeah, yeah, it's no air up there, in Utah. They about to lose layaway after this. <laughs> they gonna nah, lose layaway after nah, this. No, 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 no. They are not gonna lose DJ Layaway. They ain't got no quarterback. That man finna go to Clemson. He's, he's guaranteed to come in there and play and start and you know get the shine on him right away. He he ain't going nowhere. He ain't going nowhere because who's gonna be his competition? Well, it's not lagway, it's layaway. Uh, yeah, I, I think he, I think he earned lagway the first game. I mean, guaranteed, <laughs> guaranteed that he didn't play nobody, but he still he earned that name. Yeah, Dylan had I mean, like four first touchdowns. Half, first half of the game, he had like seven touchdowns. Dylan had four touchdowns last night. We get he up with good. y'all, man. I, I, uh, I tagged you two out on Twitter when I touched down in Orlando, y'all. Make sure y'all tune in tomorrow night. Watch the best hey, team in hey. Florida play. Make sure you stay in the chat when we live, man. You might see Truckler in there. You might catch him you, slipping. You, you, you going to be live during the Florida State game? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's a Sunday no. night, bro. <laughs> no, nah, bro. That's Sunday night. Y'all can have it. I'll be on um the next morning. All right. Well, yeah, I, uh, I'll still be in the chat uh, strolling like Debo on that PT Cruiser waiting to see Florida Trucker. Nah, definitely after that game, I will do a reaction. <laughs> All right. I might be giving y'all some props. I might laugh for a good 10 minutes. That Florida trucker might disappear on y'all if y'all win, man. That means he owe 100. Oh, oh, yeah. All I know is if Florida State lose, the first line on my um reaction videos is them boys don't lie to me for the last time. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, man, y'all go get y'allself ready for the games, man. You got about 25 minutes until – kickoff on some of these games so good luck to, good luck today to all you teams that play you know we already want to know we don't know how it feel to be 0-1 or 0-0 and zero and zero right now you know good luck good luck hopefully some upsets hopefully some good games you know but yep, yep, it is yep. cupcake week it is cupcake week um you know georgia play a cupcake team in ut math martin i'm sorry um, LSU play a cupcake team in Florida State. Um, <laughs> Utah played a cupcake team in Florida. And so on and so forth. Y'all have a good day, man. Go Canes. <laughs>